appreciate you uh, doing that because yes, that's important. Um, to start off with, there's two jurisdictions and there's a line in the sand. We have an equitable, we have two trusts and that's the two jurisdictions are actually two, two different types of trusts. One's an equitable trust where you only have um, equitable value. You, you have no, no actual things in it. The other one is where you have an equitable, uh, then, then we have the common law uh, trust, which is land, which has weight, has the writ of waste attached to it for the equitable uh, injuries that were done to the land. Any buildings that were made, any fencing, any holes that they dug, any trees that they cut because they weren't allowed to do it. So, so there's two different worlds here that that we're talking about all the time and they're both completely separate. They do not mix. Um, only the common law courts can see both jurisdictions. Equity can never see or determine common law. So that's where a lot of these people are having a big problem because they keep going into the provincial and federal court and they won't, they, they won't do anything. They can't see it, nothing. Um, it's actually very interesting how they react with it when you, when you take it to a certain level. But anyway, um, so what we're talking about now is the, is the actual corporate shares. So the corporate shares are, are because everybody in fee simple, they only have a use for a fee of things. So what that is, is you get a title to, to dig the ground and, and create this waste. You don't get the thing itself, but you get whatever equity, the money, the, the value over and above that thing that you can make off of it. That's the only thing you can take with you. So all these things that um, in order to be a part of the corporation, you have to have shares in that corporation, right? So each country is a corp corporation. Every citizen has to accept the common law land tenure by joining this corporation, right? And as, as, as I was saying earlier, you are acting as D as the citizen and C is the government. So the government requires anybody that joins their group that the person that joins their group, all the things that they that that D gets from C, they have to give back to C and trust in the shares of the company, right? Because it's all the waste that you're doing. So they give you a title by purchase that you can sell to other people and everything else, but they still tax it, right? So so because so, they're collecting the, the fee for the land tenure trust that they have to pay the monarchy, which the monarchy puts away for the the donor, right? So this is the actual uh, corporate shares for joining that that corporation and giving the giving the acceptance. This is that final uh, the final straw or the um, you crossing the right crossing your last T and handing the check over, right? This is you committing to everything that they've ever said in English law and agreeing to it. Is basically what it boils down to. So estates and reversion, what that is, is it, it's 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 leaving the exact same way that we went in. So as I was mentioning earlier, about we can't abandon the agreements, but we can accept them and then terminate them, even though we made them out of ignorance because it wasn't our folly. And the law even gives us this right in English law. So. In order to get to your land tenure, you have to remove the acceptance. So all the things that you're holding uh, as that corporate person is the, is the work truck and tools, right? And you can't get, you can't quit that corporation until you give the tools and truck back, right? Then you can quit, right? Not only are you a part, not, so you, so now that you quit, now you now, the vesting process to get your lands back requires you to do another process, which gives you a um, what's called a uh, reversionary interest, and it's a future interest, and it's a vested right. 
the corporation made it so the only way that you can become the control person of those of the shares to that count that corporation that you joined that you had to give those shares to to be a part of it so when you leave the only way that you can get those shares back is if you prove that you're going to vest your final estate right so what we're talking about today is act is the actual uh, Canadian ownership rate and how to get those shares back in the proper capacity. Is that good? Everybody understood yeah, that. That was part? great. Great. That was really good. good. Yeah. And anybody have any questions? about where we want to start on this now because it's pretty much going to be questions and kind of going over the, the, the paperwork we've already found on it. Can we post the uh, PDF that you're going to be talking from onto Skype for uh, Carolyn or anybody else who doesn't have it? Yes. And I'll also, we'll also have to post the links to the acts to are you guys on the site as well already? Carolyn and stuff? Um, I haven't joined, but Stu has, and I'm going to join right after. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Because uh, there, there's, um, there's a few blogs that already have all, this, all, have all the information out, and the important stuff is bull, and it has the links to the actual acts and stuff um, and everything in the actual blogs. Right. Um, so, so everything is there for, for you too. Uh, did anybody post anything yet? I'm just trying to find it. You're looking for the um, Canadian Shit Determination Act, uh, yeah? Yeah, I got it here. Oh, I see it. I've got it as well. Okay. Oh. Uh, that. You have to be a member to click on that link. I meant the actual... Oh, the PDF you made. Yeah. Have you got it, or do you want me to grab it? Yeah, it's coming up right now. There you go. Okay. Um... Now, Carolyn, in case you're not aware, because you're, oh, in case ahead, you're not aware, you have to push that, that yeah, that uh, icon on the left, or sorry, the right-hand side of your screen, there's a bubble. Okay. Press okay. Press okay. that yep. in order for the chat to show up, and scroll all the way down, you'll see it. Yeah, got it, got it, okay. Uh, okay. I'm going to join afterwards, and I'll look more into it, and all the, uh, I don't know if there's documents or paperwork that are important to start off with. I'm just virgin here, so. <laughs> uh, nope, that's everything's everything's. Uh, you, you'll just go through it, um, you know, at your own leisure, and okay. touch on topics that you have interest. Um, yep. And the interest could go back uh, from hearing past uh, Skype conversations. Mm -hmm. And wherever those Skype conversations, there's law to support that, and that where you can find you can find that in, in omnipotence. Perfect. Yes, we have the source documents to everything that we're discussing. We try to discuss only things that are actual that we can find that are fact of law. We don't like discussing beliefs. Excellent. Uh, okay, so David, Justin, anybody, would do you guys have anything that you really wanted? Because you guys have been reading this stuff, eh? Find anything that you want to throw out there or anything to start with? I don't really have any questions. Other, yeah, no really questions. Just, uh, just got to get it done now. So you agree that the release is required before you even attempt this do you well yeah because if if you haven't released it it's kind of a conflict of interest no yeah yeah i totally agree yeah yeah so the release has to be done okay um just trying to find that 
There it is. You got to remember, it's the Minister of Natural Resources, and it's his opinion, which is going to be deemed uh, the laws deeming him to and binding him. Exactly. I I thought I found. I thought I had that spot where, it's, where it said that you have. Because remember, I read that it was about um, you had to prove that the event is going to happen. Right, that vesting event, right, is going to happen. Yeah, because if he doesn't is, believe it's not going to happen, that's reasonable cause to say no. You're not eligible. So it appears a lot of ducks got to be in a row before we even attempt this. Um, and like you said, based on your capacity at that point uh, for trying to gain control is based on what you have done prior um, in your agreements to either A, you know, annul them or to, I guess, uh, bring yourself back into common law uh, jurisdiction by the claiming of land. And if you go in, in a, say, in your capacity that I'm speaking from right now, um, there may only be a portion surrendered or, if that's what I'm understanding, only a portion surrendered based on your abilities or disabilities, if you will, at that point. Uh, yeah, because what that I understand sort of that, is, yeah, because what, because there's that one part in here that says that even if you can prove that you actually need it for your livelihood and well-being that they also have to uh, make exemptions for you like you can't take you wouldn't be the control person but from what I'm on how I'm getting from it is that you would be if you require uh, surgery or something uh, required for your benefit they, of life they would allow you a set off yeah, they mark you as a special person, and they'll yeah. just use the annuities. So I, so I become special needs then. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so they, they have to catch yeah, twenty two, right? <laughs> yeah. See, in Canada, we all have. I think it's sixteen seventy seven under disability. So as long as you can establish the need, which is usually only the requirement of somebody in fee simple that's credible. So like your doctor or something, right? And they'll more than be happy to give it to you. But you don't want to go there, right? You want to be a control person. You want to cash out, get out, use that to fund yourself into Queen's bench, finish it off. I wonder how that would work by not carrying insurance, you know, um, because if you don't have insurance, let's say you are injured, then that would be your right at that point, first to show your eligibility for those shares, but then to be compensated based on your injury instead of going through, you know, a local IC, you know, insurance company like ICBC. But insurance is because everybody has a use or limited to the use. So you have to insure that use. When you're outside of Fee Simple, mm -hmm. you're an owner now, so you're dealing at a different level, natural law. Yeah, well, well, I guess what I was talking about, the capacity I'm at right now, which I don't have a rate of release, I'm just saying that, you know, people that don't drive or operate their vehicles with insurance. But your um, rate of release I is going to be authored you, by you, David. That's you releasing, right. revoking, and then making a claim. Like the Queen's Bench isn't going to draft up a release for you. They can give you a confirmation for the release. <laughs> Even if I'm special needs? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, okay, I got gotcha. you. Especially if, if you're special needs, you ain't coming out of Fee Simple. <laughs> <laughs> no. 
Imagine no, a very promising. person in control of land, how disastrous that could be, right? Just imagine That's a thing a, of fuel and and boom. I think that would yeah. depend on the special needs, right? Like if Obviously. You're, <laughs> right? Like, <laughs> right? If you needed it for Right for medical procedure, that's a little bit different. But if there's special needs because you're, right, drooling out of the side of your mouth, that's something different. Yeah, Alberta like was one of the first provincial uh, entities there that really jumped on board on letting you go after your annuities for medical reasons. Oh, really? Hmm. It's strange how all this stuff was coming out and now how it's all making sense, eh? It, it, well, it's like they got to kind of uh, distract us with little bits of truth, right? So if they're talking about it on the TV, people won't ever believe it. Look at what they're doing with the X-Files movie. The writers yeah. of the, or not the movie, the new series, they're, they're just rehashing what's on the internet. So if it is a conspiracy and true, if X-Files advertises it as a tv show in public then that's what people will cognitively place it into it will no longer be a truth of conspiracy it'll be a tv show exactly nobody will believe it. zachary this is what they'll do if this might actually be what game of thrones is trying to do subconsciously is move this into a fiction realm. Yeah, I totally... They did, it, I, they did it once with the word freeloader. Because anybody who doesn't want to pay a fee, really, in essence, they're just... They're basically just crying from inside, saying, hey, I'm a donor. Pretty much. Well yeah. said with that. Yeah. But if you look at what media has done, like especially with that Disney movie Aladdin, which you get the subconscious thing going on with the poor royalty. But that difference is just the knowledge of the law. The, the agreement that you have, that interaction with other men. And how would you guys how how do you how would you guys go about uh uh writing this in your words I, I wouldn't I wouldn't beat around the bush I'm gonna flat out say I'm seeking determination I'm terminating oh, yeah, this, well, so. def, 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 that, yeah but what I'm getting at is uh, to what extent are you gonna take it are you gonna make it super simple or you would you right you kind of know what I'm getting at Yeah, like I'm not going to give them my my history and 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 cry about it. It's going to be just fact, and that's it in the law. Because the first thing that I think they would have to deal with is that you have your uh, uh, your interest in the expectancy and reversion, right? Which is your which is a vested future interest. And that's what gives you the right. Um, that's what uh, the law gives you the right to for the uh, to get a determination on the control on the um, elig- on the uh, on your eligibility, right? Uh, uh, whether you're an eligible person with shares in the company, because that's really what that what the eligible person is is whether or not you have shares in that company, right? So. Yeah, you'd have to preposition yourself in a positive manner. So I agree there. Yeah. So so basically, you'd you'd, you'd basically say you'd be basically stating you know because of uh, this indenture, right? Um, it's stating that I'm a shareholder, which means I am which which would uh, mean in law that I am uh, eligible, right? And then you'd show that uh, spot from the Canadian Ownership Determination Act, right? About eligibility, right? And then then you'd uh, 
we'll ask for the determination on that eligibility. And then you'd move into uh, the control person, right? And because you're um, now that now this is where you would start talking about uh, vesting, right? Because in order to be a control person, certain things have to happen. So I think that's where that's when we. That, I think that's where you would basically state, right, that uh, the presumptions. And their presumptions, uh, we went through them yesterday. Um, yeah, that's that PDF that they're asking about here earlier. Yeah, about uh, any of your interests are, are, are transferred into shareholders and that you're a beneficial owner, right? And that corresponds to your reversionary right and expectancy, right? Because you got to remember that the reversionary right is mirrored in common law and equity. So this reversionary right is the equitable reversionary right. It's not the land, right? You see what I'm getting it? Mm -hmm. So this is where I'd pretty much stick to uh, just the reversionary right of the corporate person. And because they put in there that um, about... Uh, them not caring what you do after the trust and so on and so forth. And that it's also a requirement that that event shall happen. Not only, uh, that would be the reason why I'd go into making sure that they know that you've actually uh, released the corporate person and done all these things and you are going to be vesting the entire estate. And that this is just a part, that this is just the very first step that is required in order to vest the entire estate, right? And that is only going to be um, added just to, to uh, deal with that uh, IDEM that's required for the minister to, to say that, yes, he, it's, it's going to happen that this guy is going to vest, right? I got even point. I posted it in the room, right? That 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 did that event, right? That uh, there is an ef in effect an agreement or or arrangement, the indenture, of, a co enforceable according to the terms thereof, the indenture, under which the satisfaction of of a condition or the happening of the event that is reasonable to expect. Uh, will be satisfied or will happen the corporation will cease to be controlled by the controller and be con controlled by a person so that's exactly wh why uh, that I, would I, be the I, release then on the corporate person that's right so so not only are you making sure they they understand that you're going to be vesting the uh, the corporate uh, interest but that you're also vesting the other one, whether they can see the it or not. That's right, because we don't know if that, if we don't, because remember, this is through um, uh, Natural Resources Petroleum Division, right? Right, and they can only see so, equity. That's right, but it's Natural Resources Petroleum Division, so it has everything to do with the land. Yep. Right, so that's why I think just if, if you if somebody just dealt with just the corporate person, that might be uh, enough for him to assume that that thing will never actually properly that the event may never actually happen because we because we haven't. Uh, so in other words, like trying to uh, sending off paperwork saying I'm terminating the straw man. Or the name. Yeah, it would get you nowhere. Right, but that would establish that you're you, you have no idea that it's about land. That's right. And you will never end up and and if and if this is what that's being and if this the way that they're writing it because it's from natural resources and the petro petroleum division that deals with the actual lands and equity, right? We, we're not sure whether or not they're actually implying that you're going to be completely out. You see what I'm getting at? Because if you don't get land, 
right? How can you be outside of that corporation? You can't. Kind of, kind of see where I'm co- co- kind of thinking on that? Because if you don't have your own lands, you're stuck within a corporate jurisdiction that everybody else that's in those jurisdictions are required to have shares in it. Yeah, I get that. Kind of see what I'm getting at? So can you really truly remove yourself from from that capacity, right, if you're not going to have your own lands, right? And I think that's why in Blackstone and, and, and uh, like even Coke, because the statute of uses thing was already out by Coke, but it wasn't out by Littleton, right? So I think that's why once Coke started, right, within this new statute of use jurisdiction, they, they started discussing how you how you did these two, both of these things at once. You kind of see what I'm getting at? Because they're both attached, right? One is only the acceptance of an of an agreement. And then it, once you've accepted it, you've made another agreement inside, which is what we're dealing with now. But can you completely terminate that agreement if you don't have your own lands? So that's why I'm thinking that the, that the, the event, because the event is actually your birth event, right? Because that's the day that you that you were made into fee simple. None of us that were, none of us that had parents that, that were that are in English law. None of the kids that they had have ever been free. They've never been alive in in the eyes of the law. They've this is why you, why around seven you'd want to be going after it because seven years when you're gone to see your your presumed dead, right? So the trust starts what at at age zero or one, whatever we call it. Uh, so okay, around I, seven, you'd want to start going after it. The way I look at it is all depends on what's happening in society and everything else and the world. Uh, because if they're not really coming after you and you're not having a hard time and things aren't totally going to shit in societies around you, then the benefit is there for you and there's really no rush until the laws actually start taking effect on you. And that doesn't take effect till what, 12 years old or something, right? So you're you're pretty much like they've almost given you twice the allotted time to get your shit together and get out before they're even going to be affecting before any of the laws are actually going to affect you for any of your actual actions because your guardians are responsible for them. See what I'm getting at? So we're actually flunking in our job because we're guardians in law to those kids. And we're not teaching them the truth. So they have no way to, to understand it or even get out of it. And that's why everybody's the way they are, right? Like even today on Facebook, me and Jay were having a blast there with a couple of guys because it's just, right? People are saying, well, you can't do this because there's no law. It's like, okay, so how does anybody do anything to you if there's no law? Well, they can't, okay? So now you're telling me that I have to do this because you said I have to do it, so there's no law, so I don't have to do it. You kind of see you see where we're getting see where we're getting into some really dicey shit when we start actually going into the things that these people are assuming, right? So, well, that's why, like, I if you establish the reversionary interest that you have, that gets over the assumption part, the cognitive dissonance that they'll experience. Yes, I, I think so too, but I think that we only have to, I think it's going to be important where we put it and how we state it because you got to remember that anything that that is that may not apply to that, if you go too far into it, they're going to make it so that's what that is about and then they're going to play idiot, right? So that's why I'm thinking that at most you should it should be that, right, just stating that this is part, this is part of the steps of terminating right all right all, right all that, ref- that reflects and- back on how we we're going to label it urgent or something That's that right. might actually backfire because if you're establishing that you're in an urgent situation or life-threatening <laughs> like right away it's like well fee simple is best for you then buddy you need to contact here we're going to give you money 
we'll get you a house. Like, come on. Uh, Whereas if you've already, if you're in the state of divorce, it's completely different. That's right. Like do, if you're do you see how they're going to look at it right away? It's kind of like judging a bum on the street. That's He's right. wearing dirty clothes or a suit, right? You're going to judge him differently. Yeah. But if you're divorced, you're, it's, it's a severe injury happening by the minute. So. Right. But, but you don't want to come it, off with that, though. But it, Why not? They, yeah, they, because they, 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 they get back to your left. That's right. They don't have any right to it. As, as soon as, matter of fact, as soon as you tell them, it's actually yours because it's a vested right. I get that. Each day that, yeah, each day that you, you continue on the way that you're assumed to be, you are um, in injury um, because you're forced into the system that you're no longer part of. Um, so that could be very detrimental. I think it is urgent. Oh, I do too. And I, I, I don't think that we should, uh, myself, I don't think we, that we should uh, um, go softly on that either. Because look at the shit that these guys do, right? Like, I honestly believe that um, we should be dealing with the fact that it's an actual vested right and that as soon as you make that decision, that's the way it is and they really don't have a choice. And that's why, that's why I think that um, if it's done with a... A, a blunt sentence and then the, then then the section of their law that applies and walk them through it like a baby right so they can't get lost right one step after another right and and quote the exact same the exact thing that's required to actually hold their hand and walk them through it on a piece of paper right they're, they're, that's all we need to do and by us putting urgent across the top and everything else is also stating our capacity because hey, we don't we don't belong in line. We're the owners here. So when we want something, there's things that fast track us to the front, and I'm gonna use it because it's mine to use. Every right that I have, I'm gonna I'm gonna use that right. I'm gonna stand up for my rights. So that that's kind of how I take that. When writing this, are you? Is it, it might be a. Uh, a con or an idea to write it in the form of a syllogism, you know, where by this is true, then this is also true. And if that is also true, then this is true. Therefore, each thing supporting the uh, the beginning and each point on its own is strong enough to, to you know, uh, create an understanding where they're not, uh, you know, lost in their own, uh, I guess, opinions, if you will. I don't know. I'd have to see how it would, how, how, I don't, I don't understand how to write like that for once. Uh, I'd have to see how something like that would, how we could make something like that to turn out. But because the, because the sheer fact of law that we have on this stuff, like for him, for the government to try to say that you don't have that right is all that you need. Because basically the way I see this is as soon as they don't do it, this is just another going to be a, another notice to admit for your when you're, when you're filing your writ of entry. And that because this is something that you know that's a fact of law and that is rightfully yours, I would hassle them every week until I went for my writ of entry. So... All these things that these people are doing against the law because they're not doing them, right? Because that's the injury, them not doing it, right? When they've been given proper notice, we have to stay on that. And we have to show the judge how extreme these people are on not doing what the law says they're supposed to be doing. And that is what gets us through the courts. So... The more that they want to do this stuff, the better for us in reality. Because it's just going to push us through. It's just going to show in trial how malicious, right, vexatious these people are. 
Okay. Mm -hmm. Do you guys agree with that? Yes, I do agree with that. I'm just, I, my, my mind is still in that, uh, I'm going to see how, I'm, how it might come out in that format where, again, each point stands it, on itself alone, but it always supports the, very, the main point where you start off. Um, and um, it's very powerful because at each one of those points, uh, uh, you know, there, there, there's, no ar I mean, there's no arguments because, again, it supports what you, you know, you've begun. I kind of I, I, I kind of like what you're saying because you got to remember this isn't a claim, but even though a claim is a determination as well, right? But this is our specifically, this is specifically about a determination. So if it could be written, well, in, you said you making in the, that yeah. way, yeah. right? It would be really well. Yeah, I, I think so. I, I I think that we don't even have to claim. It's just saying uh, the law said, or you you know. That's right. I'm not I've saying done, you can say the word you. I'm, yeah. I've done this, right? You just see what I'm getting at, right? I, I'm, I'm requiring a determination for this. I've done this. The law says this, which means this, right? Yeah. And, and which means this, and right? I've done that. Here's your evidence for that, right? It's Annex yeah. Document B, Document C, right? So on and so forth, and just walk him through it like he's a baby. Exactly. I like that, yeah. I, I like that, yeah. I think it's fair to say that if you if you claim, you must be able to be, prove your claim. That that's paramount. And sometimes it's better just to ask the question: Is it not the case that, and have them respond to you, as in asking, asking, as king. Anyway, just an idea. But it, it is a common fact that here, any time you mount a claim, you've got to be able to prove that claim. And we have enormous problems playing in their games. I appreciate mostly in the lower courts, but my goodness me, they play play fast and loose. They really do. I mean, but th they even deny the Bills of Exchange Act is current legislation. How ridiculous! Or well, it, that's just well, American. But hold on, a, but hold on a second. Uh, well, that's this, a, your it's, it's a correct question. It is. Yeah. But it's also uh, a correct answer. I didn't mean to interrupt, but yeah, I just think you've got to be really, really careful. But more importantly, I was going to come on to say, you know, you've got to be able to prove um, <clears throat> rather than hypothecate or hypothecate that, you know, A, a trust exists, that there's more the, to the birth certificate than just a piece of paper, a registration of a birth. No, well, there isn't. Et cetera, et cetera. You know, I mean, there's uh, a lot to well, go well, at well, here before well, you well, get well, traction well, with them. Slow, slow, hold on one second though. But that's because nobody's looking at the determining factors for the area of law that they're trying to push across the table at the judge. People are going in there and not understanding anything about this stuff. Like, not even a clue. They don't even understand jurisdiction or what law is. Right? And then they're trying to use UCC, right, as a citizen. Well, that tells you that you don't know what jurisdiction is because UCC is only for the heads of state. Yeah. Okay. So, right, you see what I'm getting at? So all this stuff is all falling falling down because nobody wants to look to the determining factors to what they're actually talking about. Right? So, like, um, just like for the, for the Canadian ownership determination rate, the determining factor is if, if, is if this event is actually going to happen. If you can prove that the event is going to happen. Okay, so what event are we talking about? Nobody knows what event. But if you actually look at what what the subject matter of English law is itself and that it is land, right, you'll find that it's reversion, right? Reversionary right to that land. So then if you actually go and find out who actually has the right uh, to the rate of trust, right, now you go and you look at who has the right of uh, for the for that rate of trust and it says an interest in expectancy means an estate or interest in remainder or reversion or any other future interest whether vested or contingent see what i'm getting you at? say that so Could you say that one again please interest in expectancy means an estate 
Well, okay. Uh, I'm reading this from the from the Canadian Ownership Determination Act. What we're talking about now. Yeah. Right. So this is what they de they're defining it as. But um, if you look at what reversion is in most of the law and most of the dictionaries, it basically means the exact same thing. Right. It's an interest in expectancy, means an estate or interest. Right. A state or an interest. Right. In remainder or reversion. Right, because remainder, you still only have an interest. Right, when you're in reversion, you're getting your estate back and removing it out of their jurisdiction. Right, so interest in expectancy means an estate or interest in remainder or reversion and any other future interest, whether vested or contingent. Right, so when we look at what a because we went through what these uh, different trusts were uh, on Monday, the contingent. I should say the vested contingent and executive, right? And it falls into the exact same things. So you'll see that the disc that discretionary interest is something else and so on and so forth, right? But what we're talking about is the actual reversionary right, which is the vested, right? You see what I'm getting at? Where the remainder is still an interest which means it's still in con it's still in contingency because that that event still has not happened. Yeah. Right. Because remember we uh, even dealt with that other part because there was a press uh, a condition precedent. Right. There's a condition that's stopping you from being able to do that thing. Right. You have to fulfill that condition before you can move to the next level. Right. So this right here. So everything in law is takes you to this, uh, to this extent, right? People just aren't looking at it. Like, be simple. Hey, William, what page were you reading from? Yeah. What that uh, Canadian ownership? To, that's the very last page, oh. nine. Oh yeah, forty-seven. You should have said section forty-seven. Sorry, guys. Yeah, section forty-seven, oh, part. Uh, Part six. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I have right now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he heard you. <laughs> so, um, as we can see, how they write everything, they write everything within all in what all the jurisdictions in one sent in one paragraph, right? Because they got estates or interests in remainder or reversion and any other interest. So we have. Your common, you have your equitable right. Well, look at all the three, all the three estates are in here: possession, remainder, and reversion. Right? Remainder, reversion, and any other future interest is would be one in equity in possession only. Right? And then if we, uh, yeah. I don't have, I don't have the it's second. It's clever part. how that's written like that. But it, but if you go to uh, go to section forty eight of that, um, I should get the link and post it. We need a section 48 then. Um, it's if you actually click on the heading, it's a, it'll actually open up the page for you. The, the PDF is full of links. Just click on the the owner part five can you know at the very top, and it'll open up the PDF. It'll open up a web page for you. Yeah, because isn't that a uh, omnipotence blog? Yeah, it is. Yeah, it's on yeah. omnipotence blog as well. And then click the very next page here. I'll actually post the link right now in Skype just so everybody has it. So I dumped to the very next page because I just read that for everybody, but I want everybody to look at this page. Because this is how they determine the beneficial ownership. And you'll notice that they also have all the jurisdictions in this as well. Right? Because they've got your possessions, interest in possession of beneficiaries. And all interests in expectancy of beneficiaries, right? And if we actually, re and if you actually look, one is for the income, one is for the capital, right? And then we then, then we go down to the very then we right then then five and six is all discretionary interests, right? For income of the trust and all discretionary interests of the beneficiaries within any part of the capital of the trust, right? 
and then the very first thing after after you get through that is there you go there's your calculations to start your start the vesting process so we can see that it's it's what they've hidden in that stat in the Westminster or whatever that uh, what do they call that thing? Chapter forty six of Statutes of Canada, nineteen seventy three seventy four. Right? They they hid the deter what the determining uh, factors are. The true determining factors, what they hid them in there, and that's the green stuff. That's green. If starting at page two, it's starting in green, and then if you go to page four, uh, number A, it's the uh, fourth uh, se fourth sentence from the top. <clears throat> Where it, is, where it is established that there is, an, in fact, an agreement or arrangement enforceable according to the terms thereof, under which, upon the satisfaction of a condition of the happening of an, of an event that is reasonable to expect that will be satisfied or will happen, the corporation will cease to be controlled by the controller and be con controlled by a, by a person. Um... That's what we want to express to Natural Resource Canada. Mm. That's urgency. right. Um, and it also says it doesn't matter about the age or anything else. It's, it's, they're not even going to look at it. Um, and also it doesn't matter what you're going to do with it after you become the control person. Um, because don't forget, you're, the control person would be bound by the laws of their jurisdiction, right? So if you're uh, if you're the if you're the next minister in government taking over all all of these things for everybody, right? You're bound by the laws of your of your of of the government, so you can't, right? You can't do certain things with them. But if you vested your own right to it, once you once you've got control of it, you can terminate it. You can take it to the courts, right? So that's another question that I actually want really wanted to what I wanted to kind of get into here because once you're an, once you're an eligible, and I just want to throw this out here because uh, once you're an eligible person, right? When you're an eligible person and a beneficiary to a trust and you're not uh, disabled by any law, you have the right to tell the trustee to pass those accounts. So I'm gonna throw a, I'm gonna throw another little uh, option into the into, into the pot here. Now that we kind of got this far, um, what do you guys think would happen if all we did is did made sure that we uh, did, got determination that. Uh, we are the eligible person and that we could be the control person if we chose, right? And prove that you have the right to be the control person and that, and that this thing can vest. And would it be better to uh, just demand that they do it or put it across them like, I understand from my understanding the laws of trust makes it so if I don't take control of this asset and I have the right to take control of this asset then I have the right to get the benefit the, the trustees to pass the accounts and close and close it on my behalf or me beneficial interest yeah right yes but what I'm getting at is by not taking actual control of it means that now because um, the laws of trust in Canada anyway if I'm a benefic beneficiary to something and I have the right right to it to terminate it I don't take I most most of the time I just I would just tell the trustee okay I want to close the trust and then pass the accounts 
right? And it's and because it, it takes a judge to do that, the trustee is required required to take because he's got control of your estate. So he has the money that he's going to use from that estate, right, to vest your estate and transfer it over to you at the same time that you can have set off to it. But if he's transferring it from a trust, you've got to have a trust for it to go into, surely. No, you don't, because you're passing the accounts and you're terminating the trust. So now you're taking the thing back. So you're going to take it, but it's their trust, not yours. No, it's not their trust. Sorry? It's not their trust. You're the beneficiary. They're the trustee. So they're just yep. the assumed owner of the trust. So it was a grant until you talk. So what you're That's trying to say is establish that you're the... You're the edu- <clears throat> eligible person, yeah, right. But you don't want to be the control person because that's going to keep you in the system. So whoever is currently use that money to vest the system or vest that's the it. land. That's it. You have my authority to, right? <laughs> you see what I'm getting yeah. at? And yeah, I see you. Okay. Yeah, I work on. Yeah, I get it too. All right. I'm I'm working a different avenue than just what they're trying to put on the paper. I'm working with other acts and statutes and the rules of English law. So, in other words, what you're saying is I'm the eligible person, but you're the one claiming to be the control person, so now use the funds, vest my land. Let's get out. Well, to vest the shares in the corporation and make a court case. Because then they have to hire the lawyer. They have to make sure everything's done properly. If you take control of it, you have to be the one that does it properly, right? Every time that you botch it, take it to the court, you're screwing yourself. But if we leave it in their hands, they have to be capable of, right? Capable of their duties. You see what I'm getting at? You don't have to be capable of your duties, if it, right? If you you see what I'm getting at? Because now it's yours. You're just shoot, right? So now you'll have to do all this shit yourself. So what I'm thinking is, if we if we just showed like, hey, we do have the control, the capacity to be the control person, right? And we're eligible as the as the true owner with one hundred percent of the shares, right? Because it's an individually named trust, right? Then now you have to take right. So that means that I can order you to to, to pass the accounts, and I can also give you the authority. To set off any of those costs against my my the 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 the, the, the value of the shares and the estates held by held by the corporation. Wow. wow. Yeah, that I think that might be the the path. Right, because 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 that because then that's just more things that if they don't do it, then there that's just more things that they didn't do. Right, I was, I kind of got stuck on that last night. I was up really late, him <laughs> tossing that around, looking at the trustee act and everything else. Because I've already, I've already been into court with the trustee act, and and the judge verified that yeah, only only that only the common law courts can terminate the ju- terminate the trust, and the trustee is required to do it if the beneficiary is standing there in the without a disability. Well, you'd even want a better position to say that they're not doing that. Exactly. So if they didn't do it, that's another injury on top of not determining it. So if they don't determine it, right? You see, kind of see what I'm getting at? So they're, they're, we're just adding more things that we can add to the notice to admit at the time of claim. Right? And then you can, then I'm sure you could even probably uh, make a motion right off the hop, right? To get to uh, make it so everything is set off to that. So your so your so maybe we could get our so maybe it will only cost us the initial five hundred bucks and be able to set everything else off, everything else off from the entire court process against it. Mm. I went a little bit too deep, didn't I? No, you hit it awesome. <laughs> yeah. But that's why I don't sleep much. My brain just doesn't shut up. Yeah. And it always goes 
50 miles an hour as soon as I start to put my head on the pillow. Right? Just double yeah, times. I have that problem. <laughs> so. So that, that's, that's. I don't want to just say what I was saying earlier was only cautionary. I wasn't trying to throw something into the mix that was supposed to be a uh, matter of fact or anything. Just based on the experiences we've had here, um, you've got to really know your footwork on this because these judges really know how to trip you up. That's all I was trying to say. <laughs> But that brought in that, like, we don't have to take the burden on of this process. Just oh. prove and establish that you have the capacity and you're eligible for the 100% shares. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Right. <clears throat> so that it would be getting the trustee to do what they're paid to do. Yeah, paid to to do. do. That's right. Yeah. That's their job. So then, if they're not gonna if they're not gonna listen to us, you at least want to establish that they're not gonna listen to us doing the right process exactly. versus just any process. What is the uh, the um, let's say you went through the entire process and everything was accepted, and now you are totally um, released of the court person through the through the um, not, I guess it's, is it the selling of the shares or it's the invest or the investment into the shares. That's one point I'm trying to get an understanding. But second of all, the uh, where is it going now? That you've done all that. What you're at zero point. Where are you going from that point? To understand it. This still all goes to Queen's Bench. You're just getting the trustee to do to take on the burden. So they're claiming to be the control person already, but you want to establish that you have the capacity to be the eligible person, which then would remove them from being the control person. But you hey, don't want I, to take it. Can I add another level to this now? Are you guys yeah. ready? Are you guys ready? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Because, because, <laughs> both, because both trusts are attached and because that event and reversionary interest is written in for both common law and equity, wouldn't that mean that you could enjoin the other parties to uh, 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 pass the accounts for the entire trust at one time? Like both levels of it because one's created from the other. So as soon as soon as that as soon as the as soon as the government if if they did uh, tr if if they did take it to the Queen's bench to give it back to you the first thing that you should be doing is adjoining the lands that you claim and everything else in that claim without even giving the notice yet to the tenants and making the judge do it all from the bench because he's the trustee for the land tenure. Right. You'd make, make them move in common law, not you. That's right. Mm -hmm. So we're getting pretty deep. Uh, function of government. I, I didn't know if it was a good time, but I had to because... As soon as the process starts, because we've got to remember, uh, the only that's the acceptance to the contract. So they just made another contract inside of a contract, right? So that vesting is only that's that's in my in my eyes being the donor. That's something that's moot. So that's not even my true vesting. That's a fiction. It doesn't mean anything. It's only gonna it, that money only means something because people in English law don't see that it's slave bucks yet. So as soon as people realize that those are actual slave dollars, is anybody going to accept it? No. So it's moot. It doesn't matter. We're right. We're basically just using that to, to get us uh, through the courts process and remove all the acceptance. Right. So that is just the very first fraction that, right. That's, that's almost nothing to, towards your true vesting potential. So that is uh, everything else that I can see the way that the law is written. They are directly, um, uh, one is created from the other. So, so they're all together because the, the corporate shares isn't, isn't the true uh, event that needs to happen. 
It's walking function of government through their job. Yes, because they're all the trustees in their different capacities. So the corporate person, right? It's the it's it's the minister of natural resources, right? And for the uh, land tenure, it's the common law judge. So if we got so so if it it's kind of strange that these things are kind of working out this way that things are just kind of falling into such a almost a, uh, by academically Domino. looking at it yeah they're just they're they're made so one is to the next to the next to the next next right and they're all attached right so wouldn't it to me that it would that's kind of I think that's so far the best avenue that I've seen to make it so they have to do it themselves because the provincial and federal courts will not move to Queen's bench when we start doing this stuff even with your 6. Dot and chapter 18 he will not oh yeah he can't oh, see it oh, yeah. he's supposed to because that's a chancery that's a chancery affidavit that's a chancery that's a chancery affidavit i even put it on him i even put it on him continue oh, I, I know that Go ahead. I like it though because if if we're gonna establish a negative fact, which we can't use in law anyways, we might as well establish that they're not doing their job to the T. So if we're not walking them through everyone through their job, so even if we did go ahead and and become the control person, that's. To me, it does seem like a conflict of interest because we're controlling fee simple now where we're going to try to claim that we're not even wanting to be participating in it. Do you see that? I, 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 yeah, I do, yeah. And that's why so, it's, I, think, I think that's why I don't think we should take control. I don't think we should take, take it as a control person. We should stand as having the capacity of being able to take the, be the control person but tell them we don't want anything to do with it, so you're going to pass the accounts and terminate it, as your job is to do as the trustee. You created it, you're going to terminate it. Right. I, yeah, I agree. Th this is where I, when I say you got to have your end game all figured yeah. out. You got to have that's, the process as well figured out. But that's why these chats are so crucial too, right? Because just be by, me by myself, it's just, I w it w these help so much. Like, just even with helping people and stuff, because you go over it more and more, and you catch more stuff, and you put more things together, right? So. Oh, I, I agree. I love but, reading, you know, free reading. This whole point is uh, them, the minister acting as, in the capacity of a trustee. If you went into uh, that level of uh, taking control... Could you not reappoint and then come in a different angle without being in equity but being in, in common law? Because he's never been appointed by you. But then if you did, would you not then have control of the shares? But there's as somebody already being a makes control a person, though. Yeah, that's kind of the catch. There already is a control person. All we have to do is, we, is establish that we have the right to give them orders. And then they have to do it anyway. It's the same thing as appointing somebody else. Right? Control person still, being the minister still, of natural resources, whoever he's directed, right? So I don't know who it is. Is it separate for each province now? Uh, Have they no, changed that? Uh, for the Canadian Ownership Determination Act? No, it's all Canada-wide. This is your federal... No, no, no. Your, I'm talking about the directors of... like You, you know how you talked to Tyler uh, Cummings there? No, it's all federal. It's all federal. So there's this only one all, director for... for yeah. Okay. Yeah. Do we know who that is yet? I'll be finding out. All right, Stephen Carr will put me directly to him. I guarantee you. I guarantee you. Within 24 hours of, of me sending this to Stephen Carr, I'm going to get a reply. Uh, I guarantee you, you're going to move heads. So, yeah, it's pretty exciting. Could, yeah, th this establishes that. And because don't forget, with me, we can also put in that I've already asked for this. And be, and it and it's wrong for them to need that I have to have it exactly to the T like this. 
the Tyler and Cumming t- event is proofing incompetence is the function of government. <laughs> <laughs> and I think I, I think we should take that. To, I think we should use that. I really do. Like, th- it's wrong. This mm-hmm. I should not have had. I should not be divorced and all this stuff from you guys and playing this word game on me. Right? Like, you obviously knew by me challenging the live record of birth and all these things that this event is happening, whether you like it or not. <laughs> right? Can I see what I'm getting at? Oh, I, I agree. Like. There, I, I don't know anybody that's done the things that I've done with the government to prove the severe injuries. Like, I have injuries coming out the yin yang from these guys because of all the releases that I've done and everything else. Even my very first release. Sure, they could take my land, but all the other things that they've been, all these other bills of equity that they've actually been forcing on, trying to force on me, and then they, and then at trial, they all of a sudden, uh, have the crown standing outside we're dropping all the charges right like it's it's been such a bullshit uh roller coaster ride with these with these players that i think that it should be done and that's why i'm i'm trying to stress to everybody that it's important that everything that we do we've got to write it and make sure that we document it and everything else because these are what we need to use for the notice to admit and these are our fact of law to make sure that you don't have to have a trial, right? You're going to well, have yeah, some if, judgment. If, if we walk, if the path that you're talking about, if we walk them through that and they don't do it, those notice to emits will get us to a summary judgment, like right off the bat. Yeah, that's my opinion too. Yeah. So. So that that's so basically what I'm thinking is, is is trying to get them to. Uh, start the passing of the accounts and as soon as they and if they do uh, be ready to adjoin the other parties right which would be your seal holder of your province and the attorney general of your province and the individual that you're going to be claiming lands from right because you are afraid right to claim lands Right, because of all the all the things so, that they, yeah, they've been I doing. I want to touch on I want to touch on that because I was going to ask something last time and uh, I forgot. Yeah. They turn my land into well, I shouldn't say my land, the land that I was looking at, into a provincial park. So I never thought about how that can open up just like a wave of people putting in themselves into the as a party. It could be unlimited. In other words, they could exhaust me until I'm dead. Yeah. Should that should I just abandon the provincial park idea now? I would. Yeah, and that's what I was Cause, thinking. Because don't because don't forget if we can move our domicile at any time. So, let's say a bunch of us decide to vest exactly where we are. Then we all decide to go and invest in some valley somewhere and take the whole valley. Each one of us do it independent on independently on a on a different piece of land. But together, right? But not in the same court case. But you, you see what I'm getting? Working together and stuff like that. That's that's when uh, it will be easy to do the uh, prevent like a provincial park like that or something. Because then we will have the amount of people to help for anything that does come up, and we're going to already be more prepared and have the money to deal with it too, right? Because we would have already invested. You see what I'm getting so, at? So there's nothing to stop somebody adding themselves as a party because that would destroy the interaction between men. Is is exactly okay? That's that, yeah. that's the catch, right? Anybody that's can say, okay, yeah, I have, and the judge has got to hear it. Right? Even though that he's technically, gonna, even then though, even, if even government wants after, to get nasty, they can do. That's how they can stop people from getting land. Then is they'll just. Relentlessly keep sending people to be part of parties. This that would be worst case scenario. In other words, we can't get it through the, the courts because that's what they would do. Uh, only to There's a certain no. only to a certain extent. I'm sure once, like even with the provincial park thing, I'm sure. Uh, let's say by the third person, and if they've all been fee simple, right? Then you can do, then you can stop. Then you could probably stop all the courts from even accepting an application unless it's somebody that's in the proper capacity. 
I was going to say, like, there has to be something that we could establish right? because vexation, you'd, like... You'd have to show that there, that there's something up here, right? Conspiracy, like, established conspiracy. Yeah. And that mm. would be falling into... Um, uh, what's that thing called? Proving that the government is actually in a conspiracy. Um, and that's yeah, why... Yeah, you don't want to go there. <laughs> no, we are actually... Yeah, actually, we could in this in this circumstance. And yeah, because this. equity can't see common law. That would be one That's of right. the injuries and, we'd attack. And let's face it, like it'd be like, um, it would be hard if it was like a provincial park thing. But if you claimed a bunch of land in the middle of nowhere and that stuff started happening, you could basically present it to the judge. Like, really. There isn't this many people that drive by this fucking place in a week, and you're telling me that there's this like really no. You're gonna have to estoppel, and right, and and make it so they have so many days from today that anybody in the proper capacity, otherwise their claim is not even gonna be their motion is not even gonna be entertained. Right? Don't even call right. me to come. <laughs> right? Can't you do that right off the bat though, and cover your base by anybody? That has to be in the proper capacity to make the claim. You can't just do it in fee simple. Or is that that's, destroying the interaction of men? Well, that's that's kind of the catch with English law. Somebody has to injure you before you can stop them, stop any more activity from it. Right? So, there, so it would actually no, what have I'm to saying start is happening. Part of, your, part of your claim, your land claim, you establish that they have to make a proper claim in the proper capacity. So I know that doesn't stop people from doing private and unlegislated acts. Yes, but again, that wouldn't stop until you can, until you've gotten past the point where you're actually starting with the deal with the writ to uh, writ to lands, right? Because not until you're actually not until you actually uh, get your writ for lands uh, proven, right? Can you prove that you can stop uh, all fee simple from claiming the land? Because the fee simple aren't claiming, aren't aren't there to say that you can't be a corporate person. They're saying you don't have any right to that land, right? So until you get to that writ of entry and can actually prove that you actually have that right in the capacity of donor, that's when that's going to kick in, Right? So the, you should you technically get, be able to get them to then just finish this off within a couple of days, not even. Uh, well, they have to make a court date. Um, well, they have to make an application to the court for the trusts because trusts are an application; they're not a claim. Um, so, so the trustees would have to make applications to the courts. Yes, and I, I I'm. I think that I can get them to do that now, yeah. Just because of the sheer injuries and everything, that, and to the extent that I've actually gone to, like, to deal with this. I think that's the only reason why I, I have a chance to even uh, get them to do it. But even then, I Would don't have... Would they try to, to set off anything, to... anything that you've claimed now? Would they try to set off... I don't you know. Think that's I'm maybe gonna, what's going on. I'm gonna go. Try, I'm gonna go and try and get a non-resident resident post office box because I don't have any ID or anything like that. So I'm gonna go and try and get. And if not, then I'm just gonna make that a part of my email and everything else. Like, hey, I can't even get a post office box. So you can't. You you have to send it to me by electronic mail. Everything has to be by electronic mail because I'm divorced, and even your even your crown corporation. Right, doesn't recognize being divorced and and, and won't uh, allow me to do anything unless I w unless I want to be a subject of their jurisdiction, which I won't be. Doesn't general want... delivery do that? General delivery do that for you? I don't have any ID to pick up my mail. So general delivery, you'd have to show you'd have to show ID. Right. Right. So. You're kind of like that when I don't know how many of you guys don't have any ID. I haven't had ID for a long time. You can't do anything. You can't get a hotel room. You can't do nothing. 
if you don't have my IP, you fuck, you're fucked, man. You can't, you can't do a thing. Don't do that stuff. Play the duck until you're ready to vest and do it all in one shot. Just so it's a vacation. Go take a vacation. Relax. Right? Don't get all stirred up and everything else and put yourself in my position. Right? We don't have to. It's, anybody can do this very simply just by taking the time and learning it and then just doing it once you've learned it and you're prepared for it. And do what's required as soon as it's required and just follow what the law says and you'll be done and you won't have these issues. You won't you won't be getting thrown out of courtrooms and all these other things, these all these horror stories that the free man and everybody else talk about, or any, including me, the horror stories. No one has to go through any of it. You have to start reading the law and doing what, doing what the law set, doing, and enforcing them to abide by their laws that binds them. And realizing what we need to do to remove those agreements so we're not bound by them. So what has... What, is it? what do we... What law can we use to make the control person uh, close this? I think I'm overthinking this now and going brain down. Trustee Test, Act. Trustee Act. Because got to remember, this is all trust. The Trustee Act, but can't... I, See, that's where I got confused, though. You're using Manitoba. How can I use that in Alberta? Are they not going to say that's same. a different jurisdiction? No, look at look at your trustee act for Alberta. It's, it's the same thing. All trusts for wherever they've been created. Within their jurisdiction. Within their jurisdiction. Everybody look at your trustee act for your, your province or state. They're all the same. Same with your landlord and tenant act. Reversion. It's, they're all the law of conveyancing. They're, it's the same for all the provinces. They're just slightly worded this, slightly worded differently, but they mean the exact same thing. The arrangement. Yeah, I've of, looked before and I, I came up empty handed for a trustee act for Alberta. They got it worded something different. Uh, Alberta Trustee Act. It's in the room. All right, let me look at it. You just forgot about putting Alberta in there. So. <laughs> uh, Maybe I'm thinking about something different than here. Uh, number one, in this act, trustee includes an executor administrator of, of a trust, trustee of, a, of the estate of a person, or a trustee whose trust arises by construction of implication of law as well as an express trust, and several joint trustees. So we already know that, th that this is a, a vested right, so it's an it's a implication of law. So there you go. And if you keep going right. down, right? investments, trust liability, um, regulations, appointment, and discharge. Here we go. So and now the is the... Yeah, continue. Uh, so uh, where a trustee having commenced to act and before having fully discharged and reformed the trust and powers re reposed in the trustee desires to be discharged from the trust and the powers reposed in the trustee, the trustee m may make application to the court of Queen's Bench for an order passing the accounts of the trust to the date of the application of discharging the trustee from the trust and appointing a new trustee in the trustee's place. And a court, and the court on the hearing of the application, blah, blah, for passing the accounts, to start discharging the applicant. And appointing as trustee any fit and proper person nominated for the purpose in the application. 
Um, and it, you're going to keep going and you can notice that it's also for the discharge, right? Like we actually stopped and right? it's also for discharging the trust. So it, it's, it's written in two different ways again, right? And then if you go down to 15, application for discharge, right? Um, order appointing a new trustee, right? And then we go down to vesting the trust property. When an interest by which a trust, a new trustee is appointed to perform a trust containing a declaration by the appointer to the effect that the any estate or interest in land, right, that is subject to the trust, in any chattel that is subject to the trust, well, how about that chattel, that's your corporate person, um, and the right to convey and receive any debt or 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 other choice in action that is subject to the trust. There you go. And then look at this. Woo. Right now, you have an interesting thing here. Now, this is 17, eh? I'm just so you realize I'm reading number 17. Yeah, Vests I'm reading in, along with you. Best in the person who, by virtue of the in instrument, by virtue of the instrument, <laughs> are in danger. <laughs> and are the trustees by performing the trust, okay? So that's a Canadian Ownership Determination Act, remember? Because now, uh, by virtue of the instrument, you're now uh, the shareholder, right? So see what I'm getting at? The declarations without any conveyances or assignment, but subject to the Land Titles Act, <clears throat> operates to vest in those persons as joint tenants and for purpose of the trust, the estate, interest, or right. Um, and I'm sure if we went and dug through this, there'd be a lot of stuff in here we could... That it's just it's they're the same in every province. They're just they arrange right. them differently and use slightly different words and right, but they all mean the exact. They all it's basically all the same thing. You would you would you would take them to court and underneath the trustee act and make a claim though, because and you can't make the application because they're supposed to make the application. So because they're not making the application, you make the claim because now they've injured you. So now it's a claim. Okay, I get that. Right? And that's why that's another reason why they threw out my application for the trustee act. Right? Because I was only asking for a determination of the live record of birth, right? And I wasn't asking for Right, but else. you weren't a con you weren't a control person though, so that's Exactly. That's why I was <laughs> <laughs> you see what I'm getting at. So I was even then, even the live record of birth, I was close. Fucking close, man. All this stuff. Like, that was inches. That's why I had the, That's why I was able to... That's why the judge told those 20 guys, 20 bailiffs, or whatever they were, to, like, to, there was, it, it filled the room. It filled that tiny little... Because the man of the Queen's bench, they're just little tiny little... They problems. gotta be dying to know how to go through this process. I guarantee you they don't. I think I there's think few individuals that do, but I think the majority don't. Well, the, the top judges do. But... The very top judges, yeah. Here in Alberta, I, I would say there's very few. Well, the, I, I think all the Queen's Bench judges know. They'd have to. It's law of property, first year. Harvard, this is in Harvard's law, Harvard law, first year property law. Fee simple. How do you cheat through first year, though? Well, it's, it, but that's the thing. It's, it's, um, it's uh, optional. It's not a requirement in any law course. Fee simple is the assumption. Well, there there you go. Right? But that's what I'm saying. So in order to be a common law judge, they would have to understand the, um, the difference in two in order to stand in common law to be able to see them both. See what I'm getting at? How could a, how could a common law judge have the capacity to be a common law judge? If he doesn't know the two. That's why there's so many corporate judges, but there's only a few common law judges that are both. Yeah, that makes sense. Right? So the ones that have the gold frill around the red are the common law judges that are sitting in the in the corporate courts. And at that time, they're sitting in the capacity of the corporate court, so they still can't recognize it. But if that same judge was sitting in the Queen's bench damn right he'd be able to determine it and that's even what that's even what blackstone says and the difference between the courts of common law and equity 
you'll get a completely different ter determination from a courts of common law than you will from the courts of equity on the exact same thing. The exact same thing happened in both, you get a completely different determination. And common law is always empty. Like go to go go to the common law side of the court uh, of the courthouse. There's no one there. Oh yeah, I know that. Like, like look, go, matter of fact, you can you can you can book a, a you can check to see what court court dates are all available online in every province. Go to the Queen's Bench for applications of the Trustee Act because that's common law, right? And look how many. You could get you could get a court date for tomorrow. Cause there's even when I was in there, we were the um, uh, the live record of birth was I'm pretty sure it was the very next day, or wasn't it or was it three days or something? Right. Anyway, the judge the judge even broke that that common law judge then uh, broke the law even for the administration of law because he allowed that uh, the. Registers the Attorney General's of Canada uh, office to uh, do a motion and submit things and have it all done all outside of the administration of law, but because he approved it in equity, he was allowed to do it. But if that was in common law, you, that would have been an, an instant error error of the court because they're not allowed to do that in common law. They can only do that in equity. Very sneaky. Yeah. It also seems to me in a, uh, a broad sense that an injury is noticed uh, when you have proven you are no longer injuring yourself. So what you also bring that into a court if they've, or, you know, into the matter, if uh, you're not getting to, they're not making a determination, you can always ask the court, how am I injuring myself in this matter? If they can't prove the injury yourself, then obviously the injury is done on with them. It's already you know it reverts back to them then. You get what I'm what I'm saying? What I'm putting down there? Yeah, but uh, but the catch is you have to reverse the onus before that works. Right. Right. You you, you have to flip it so that so they have to prove something before that'll work. Right. Otherwise, you still have to prove an injury even happened. So just because you're not injuring yourself, that that doesn't mean that they are. That you haven't even proved an injury yet. So so how can you even be injuring yourself? See what I'm getting at? So that's why we want well, to I deal with the, what I, Yeah. That's that's why the fee simple is so important. Because as soon but, as they, as soon you got to remember they make huge profit off of self injury. Oh, do they ever? Because you got, but the biggest catch is, is that as soon as they say that, as soon as you can get them to say that you are subject or that you were subject to this English law, you have the right to leave and this and this vet and these vested rights. You see what I'm getting? This is at? why you want so, to remain subject until you are no longer subject. That's right. Right. right? Or prove that they've just been ignoring it and forcing you to do all this shit against your will. Right? So by people going in and out, in and out, in and out, right? Like, Because a lot of people have gotten close. Right? Because they don't understand what they're doing, right? Like Paul Fiola, he got close. A bunch of people have gotten close because they've been going after Lance. Right? Now if they had this, right? They would never have been able to do anything to those people. Because they would have released everything properly, right? So then the government doesn't own those lands no more. So how can the government come and take you, remove you from the lands when there was nobody there, right? You see what I'm getting at? He would have left this, peacefully, right? Right. This is or where I agree before. with you, William. You remove the subject matter of land when we want to become the control person. Whereas in if we direct a control person to do his job keep it in the land that's right that's that's why everything that i'm trying to everything that that's going through my brain with this stuff is how can we make it so we can prove that they had a job to do that they're not doing because if these things if everything's a trust 
and we're a beneficiary in it. And everything the law says that the trustee has to do these things when the beneficiary is not disabled by a law, and they and they and they and they demand it. Then why are we having to fucking do anything besides write them a letter? And this is where David was talking about like they're not going to do anything until we stop self injuring ourselves. That would exactly correct. Yeah. 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 yeah exactly. Correct. You know, you, we took the time to learn learn our ignorance, right? But we don't even have to. But but that's the thing. Um, those things I wouldn't even get into until after you've tried dealing with the, the only the determining factors, right? And even then, I wouldn't even. I don't think we should really be getting into that with them. Your actions, your post actions. Of your knowledge will prove your knowledge, your capacity of the knowledge. That's right. So basically, all we have to do is keep sending them the same thing over and over again till the answer. Right? Not getting into that shit. No, I have a vested right. Right? If they send you something back after you send them all that, they're trying to go off with it. You send them the thing back and say, "What? What are you talking about? What do you not understand about this? Are you not bound by this law and, and everything else? Why do you not? Under, why are you not capable of understanding your own law? Yeah, but not, I think not even really. make a legal determination. But that's what your first thing was. So if they're if they're call, if if they're if they're going to message you back for uh, and if they're not going to be specific on what they want from you, they're playing a game with you. Because you just sent them a specific notice for determination on specific things, right? So if they require something else, right, then they need to t contact you and ask you for that thing, not ask you what the what are you talking about. You kind of see what I'm getting at? They will be at like if they say, okay, well then I'm I'm, I'm going to need the number off your birth certificate. So you're getting it? That's a legitimate reply for a question. Right? You see what I'm getting at? Or um, can you prove that the release was, was delivered? Right? The things that are the determining factors that are part of the law if that you're discussing, if they don't deal with those determining factors, they're fucking you. And you need to put them on, put them, put them straight. Don't fall, don't fall down, don't, don't let them lead you down that rabbit hole of talking about things that don't matter. The determining thing, determining factors are all on that page, and there aren't any others unless you can prove them to me, right? So why are you even doing this? And you need to nail them on it right away. Stop them, <laughs> no, no. You need to prove this, and if you can't, then I guess that's the injury, and we're just going to go to court, right? Because if they're not going to do it. You're still gonna to have to go to court anyway, so then you just, right, keep that until your until your all your rest of your process. Keep dealing, and sending them that, and saying, you know, right, this is, it's a continued injury because you know I'm divorced, right? You're not asking me for any 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 information that's actually to do with the determining factors. You're asking about mood things that don't have anything to do with this or law at all. So unless you can prove otherwise. I'm, I'm taking it in his injury, and this is notice of that injury continuing. Right? That's what we need to be doing to these people. Right? Join well, yeah, every again, week I mean, not... once you've, uh, yeah, when you've done this uh, next step here, um, there is no more proof of you injuring yourself anymore. I don't, I don't see it. I don't know where it is, but I don't see you. But you're doing that. So where does the injury lie from that moment on? It has to all lie uh, with them from them not doing what they're supposed to do based on an act of law. That's right. And that's why if they reply yeah. with anything but questions on those determining factors on that of that of that law, right? Then you know they're they're playing a game with you. Right? right, and that's why that's why I'm saying we shouldn't put too much in it. Only deal with the determining factors of law, right? And basically, and even state that the, right, this is the determining factors. And if there's any other determining factors that I'm leaving out, which I'm sure I am not, right? Because it's all done. You know what I mean? And that's that. 
we're, it's just us William, putting... you said there was a part two to uh, your PDF, or did you just mean there's a part two being that there's the blog on omnipotence? Yeah, the blog on omnipotence that has uh, a little bit more of that act that's at the very bottom, and and um, also the actual PDF of these books are on there too. The that Canada st- statue, of Canada, or whatever seventy. 70- 73, 74, whatever it is. Chapter 46 of Statutes of Canada. Same with the forms, right? The Canadian Ownership Determination Act forms. Because they're the forms that they're you actually have to get them from uh, the Gazette as well. So those are also on omnipotence. Every, all those all these hidden files in the Canadian Ownership Determination Act are all on, on omnipotence. So And they're in the library, so you just have to type type it and we'll type out that word in the library, and it'll pop right up for you, and you can download it. But yeah, I'm thinking now, the best. Now in 47, it says 12.3 percent. Yet I see you always putting 12.8. Is there a mistake? That's me, mistake. Okay. Yeah. See, that's what I mean. I'm better by reading things exact because I read so much and everything else is just my brain's just always exploding. So I rather I rather read the exact facts so people can actually get the exact facts. Whenever I'm shooting off the hip, make sure you realize that I'm shooting off the hip and that it's so you go and look at these things and learn it exact word for word for you so you understand what the law says, not what I'm saying. Right, so that's a big thing. I want people to really realize, like, don't take my word for it. Please go read it. <laughs> yeah, no, that's why I was asking you. Is I had read it multiple times and known it as twelve point three, but you kept saying twelve point eight. Yeah, I'm bad for that. So sorry about that. So I, I think that's. Uh, I think that's kind of the way that we should go at it, where we actually don't take control of it uh, from them. We make them do the vesting process. That's what I think. So. No, I agree. That leaves the all the responsibility still with function of government until you literally yeah. have your release, like exactly or your confirmation. It keeps your hands clean, basically, of fee simple. <laughs> exactly. You don't want anything to do with that shit. So I, I, I'm just trying to figure out what, right, all the different avenues and everything else. So as I said, and every, everybody can choose what they want to do, do themselves too, right? Like there's. Oh, yeah, of course. People don't even have to go after the corporate person's shares. Like you could, you don't have to do that. Uh, yeah, pretty much I'm just down to funds and then having to, Carolyn's asking what do I need uh, to go to court and can I do this in one shot if I had the funds? I'm hoping I can do it in one shot. Um, English law is English law. I don't trust it or anything else. Um, I suggest anybody that's about to do this, i the law says about 90 days, something like that, that you can actually get it done in, in 90 days. But because of everything that everybody believes and everything else, and what the law says in contradiction, I'd, I I would suggest that we give it, say, at least a couple of times. But I don't see why it couldn't be done in the first time, in the first shot. Especially if you, think, you had some think- buddies... Yeah, I think my question is, if you were given the funds to go ahead and go forward, and you had the support like this, and uh, are you prepared at this moment, or do you need some more work, do you need some more time, do you need some more before the bed, get some brainstorming in your head ideas, or are you ready now? Oh, to vest my land, I'm ready now. 
Uh, the, actually, the only reason why I'm looking at this Canadian Ownership Determination Act in the shares is because I don't have the money to vest. <laughs> so, yeah, oh, okay. I'm, re- I'm, I'm ready to vest. Funds to vest. If you had funds to vest, you can go, like, tomorrow? Uh, I'd say within probably three weeks, three weeks to a month, because you'd want to start doing your notices and stuff again and making sure that you're you're getting everything uh, backfired up again and you'd have to go and uh, stake claims and, and things like that too, right? So there's, there's paperwork involved and you want to make sure that you have a bunch of your notices, uh, your motions ready to go and so on and so forth. So, yeah, I think my question was more like, where are you in your process? Like, have you sent in notices? Have you sent the claim? Have you done the vesting paperwork yet? Have you sent anything in, or you're just waiting for the funds first? Oh no, I actually uh, started doing this last spring, uh, last June or July, um, is when I actually started the vesting. But then things happened, so I, it didn't end up happening. So I didn't have the money, so I couldn't continue it. Uh, okay. And I and I plan on doing that as soon as I have the money. So yeah, it's basically as soon as the money's close, I'm going to start uh, sending. Well, I'm going to start doing the notices and everything again right away, anyway, because it's coming to the time where I need to start doing that again. But yeah, right. I'm 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 ready to go as soon as I can get the cash, pretty much, and yeah. write up the paperwork. <laughs> Once one person's crossed the finish line, then others go, hey, we can do it too, right? So if it's just a problem of funds, that can be donated, right? Uh, yeah, we're trying to work out ways to for people to donate for that, yeah. Yeah, like you have a donate button, it could just be donated, and then you can go forward and do your thing, and then once you're over the finish line, others it opens doors for others, yes? Exactly, yeah, because everything I get for... Fiat wise and and lands is they're, they're going to be opening op- basically for people to come and learn this and right so they don't have to be so they wouldn't have to spend thousands of dollars to try to live and learn it at the same time right because exactly right there's not many people are going to let people just go and come and camp on their land until they vest right so right right plus right. we got to charter that boat and go grab the guys from UK remember. <laughs> yeah, yeah, oh yeah, yeah. I have to go Thank get you, the guys, Justin. Yeah. He's not forgotten You're about very us. thoughtful. It's appreciated. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. as soon as I invested, yeah, I'd have to go and get a boat and go get them myself. Yeah. Yeah. So I could just bring them right across myself. I can't wait till I see the day. Yeah. I just picture it William at the front of the boat with a pipe in his mouth or something. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I don't think I'd go to the extent of uh, getting an agreement from the UK. I think I'd just get you to make sure you get on a boat and come meet me so far out in international waters. Yeah. So. so. But no, uh, yeah, no, I'm ready to vest. Uh, matter of fact, a few of the people, a few of the guys here are already ready to vest. Um, we have- I was, but I'm, I, I. I really am going to reconsider now where my land was because it being a provincial park, the mountain that was part of my uh, land that I was looking at, or I shouldn't say my land anymore, it had a council on it of a group of people that stopped uh, Shell Canada from putting a pipeline there. So I had already suspected that they might pop in and be a party, but I never thought of the aspect from the provincial uh, park aspect, like, they could just load up an entire group of environmentalists that just keep joining yeah. in as a party. I don't want that. Yeah. So I got to rethink my land. You should take a look at in where I, where I claimed. That's the plan. <laughs> <laughs> so it, it's so beautiful. Yeah, it's beautiful. It's a beautiful area. It is. Yeah. I was going to ask that question. What point is can you offer in terms of how to select a piece of land? Was, was, was there at some point I thought I saw something about has to be crime land would be up, would be better because you're not actually forcing anybody off it. Um, yeah, but any hold, pointers, what to look for? Apart any from the amenities the land offers. Well, it's any land that's being held by anybody in Fee Simple. Anybody well, with a defeat, it's called... 
Yeah, it's anybody that has a defeasible title. So if you go to land, you go in the lands that you want to claim, the first thing that you would do is you'd go and do a land title search on it. And as long as they're in fee simple and they have it, and they're holding it in common law or, or tenants in common, right? That tells you that they have a defeasible title and you can claim those lands. But would it not be better to look for something? I mean, is there a, we talked about a minimum. What's the maximum that you could claim? I mean, can you claim something that's already got a property on it, built on it? Could you claim a farm? Uh, yeah. It's all about self-sufficiency, it. isn't it? Ye exactly. And it's about having your own territory as well. Yes. Right? So when you're... T and let's... Because you got to remember that if everybody around you were donors, would you need a very big territory? No, because any donor would be allowed... Because every donor knows that you're sharing on the lands. So yeah. if you needed to hunt that deer, you could go running across their lands too and hunt deer and there would be no injury. Correct. English law, English law, right? They want to make that an issue, right? So... Trust I would right. say so, well, Marxism would... is the relationship that donors are going to have at the end of the day. But let's just say you're a single donor, yep. you know, you're running this as a sing single attempt. You're not considering others coming down the same path and joining with you. Um, I, the reason I ask this is that there was somebody in the UK about three or four years ago who thought they were hot foot on this process and they had in mind to claim an estate uh, over on the, the east side of the country um, that was actually worth about nine million um, but it appeared it had no nobody occupying it, it was up for sale um, and it was a lot of land, it's 600 acres and a building potentially big enough to build convert into a, a country hotel and he thought that was going to be ideal I just thought, well, you know, what realistically do you think our expectations are? What we should be going after? Um, well, that's see, I, in that I try try to use uh, my most reasonable exactly. mind that I can, right? And if I looked at it as if the entire world was full of donors, what's the maximum amount of territory that I would need? that's still reasonable that everybody else could still have the same that's amount of land as me. Right. Yeah. So, right. Cause, um, it, everybody shares equally in it. So you're talking about a lot of land, right. But, but then a lot of land is not usable. Yeah. Only, a, only a small amount, right. It's only a small amount of land is really nice land and everybody should be able to share in that. So, in my, so that's why myself, I picked ten square miles of mountainous land, where no one really, no one lives on, no one, no one, uh, in these current societies, they don't live that high and stuff like that. But then I also claimed five hundred acres of uh, farmland that is already an established uh, farm in the valley. So I have a place, right? So I have a place where I can grow food and everything else where it's not going to be hard living all year round, right? But I still have enough lands to hunt on and self-sustain on that other people won't find a real use for. Right. You see what I'm getting at? So yeah. in, in, in my eyes, by, and they're both right together. So on a map, it would be one combined title in English law you would say because they're all touching right but so that makes it a, a good piece right and a reasonable piece in my mind and I think it'd be when people actually stood back and looked at it for what it was that's reasonable because there's well well more than 500 acres for every person on this planet for good lands on this planet right I'm not even taking what I think would be uh, and even share with everybody on the planet, right? Mm. So, because you do realize that everybody that's on the planet right now would all fit in Alaska. Yes, yeah, I'm aware of that. Right? They're li they're li they're lying about what's happening with the land. Yes. Right to an extreme extreme case, 
And this is why, because they can, and it keeps the jig up, right? It makes everybody keep working like mice and everything else, right? And having to try to survive. So, but yeah, that that's, I think that it, it it's really up to you. But I just try to be as reasonable as possible. And let's face it, you only need as much as that, as much as that you need to self-sustain. You don't need any more. Well, all right? I'm thinking is, if so. you find something that was unoccupied but was offered for sale, then a mystery, the, the, you know, the, it could appear a mystery buyer bought it kind of thing. There would be no, you know, it wouldn't, it wouldn't set off any, um, any alarm and bells, would it? Well, that doesn't matter either way because none of the lands that they're whole, they're all in abeyance anyway. They're not owned, so all that they they chose they chose to throw their money away on the chance that the donor doesn't return and everything else. So all the fee simple are, are playing uh, Russian roulette, <laughs> right? Yeah, and right that's that's their choice. So let's and if we look at the, the other side, if we all choose to go and live in the shittiest places on the shittiest lands and we never make a claim against the fee simple are they ever going to learn the truth so it works on it works in two ways right it makes them learn the system in a way that protects us and where they're still protected by their system right so I think you just need what you can survive on and what's reasonable, right? Like if you're an yeah. older person and you're not going to be doing a lot of stuff and everything and you just want a nice little place, then hey, 10 acres, 20 acres, 50 acres might be perfect for you. Well, right? proportionately in the UK here, that that's regarded as, as quite substantial. Right, because don't forget, you have the right at any time to increase it if you yeah. need it. Yeah, absolutely. Right? You see, or move to a different point. Right, so you or, have or create some diversity, presumably, so that you don't put all the risk in one place, which is the old way of doing things. When people uh, had their land given to them in meets and bounds, they would not be given one piece of land; they'd be given three different parcels, so that if one piece of land became diseased or contaminated or flooded or whatever, um, they wouldn't be dependent just on that piece of land. So there was diversification; they would have three different plots. That's to ensure only their survival. A, that's only an equity. You can only have one domicile. Right. So okay. if if you had your own lands and everything else, but let's say you wanted to go to Florida every year and you wanted to go and stay there just for two or three months out of the year in some ranch and you knew a guy that you could rent it from and everything else, you can. That's not giving jurisdiction to go and stay there for a few months on a vacation. Sure. It's, it's when you decide to move your domicile and if you go and choose to buy that property instead of going and claiming it, right? Because right. by you giving up your land that you have to go and buy a land that's titled by purchase puts you right back into fee simple again. Yeah, of course it does. See what I'm getting at? So, yeah, absolutely. Cause, I cause, get that. There's no issue there. Right? That would be... That would be. Because <laughs> they don't have the capacity to give it to you or sell it to you in true ownership. So that's why you have to go to the courts to get it. That's why they're throwing away their money. Because the they don't. Style, William, what about travel? Well, I was going to ask that Every, as well. Yeah, everything's bound by your jurisdiction. So once you have your own territory, even license plates, everything that you buy, right? Because remember, it's it's because no, you gave up. Like uh, I'm thinking more your land. Like you got to have somebody back watching it, make sure that it's no still under your control. No. No. Fee simple, if they can't take anything, they can never own it. Right? It's outside their jurisdiction. So if they don't get a bill of sale for it, how can they come and take it? Yeah, you've got it in absolute. It's worth saying, though, um, correct me if I'm wrong, but depending on the time period that you leave, like leave the land, if it's left long enough so it seems derelict, if you will, or just left abandoned, then um, the Crown would assume ownership of that land to take care of it would they not yeah correct yeah that's what i was asking thank you yeah well that, but anybody can tell if you haven't been look how long it takes for to look like for something to look like it's abandoned depends where you are that 
What do you no, just don't your grass can grow long, right? And everything else. But your house is not going to look like it's derelict and abandoned. Oh, okay. Probably, I get what you mean. You yeah. see what I'm getting at? They, they, there isn't going to be grass growing through your gravel road within a year or two. Signs of life. Yeah. 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 Structural, at, like, weathering. Yeah, that kind of stuff, right? Like, obviously, nobody's been around here for years and years and years. Right? And then, then, then yes, then the government will assume that you've died. And they're going to assume ownership of it again. Because that's all they ever did. Because everybody died. They went to equity. Mm. So they assumed ownership of all the land. If you also think as well, that these are your lands. You know, you're going to have all your fruit growing there. So they're going to obviously see that as well for one. But the point I'm making is, if you travel, you're going to be wary of having to come back and look after that and maintain that, aren't you? Yeah, if you've got productive land, you have to look after it. That's it. Yeah, exactly. Yours. Brings me on to an interesting question, gents. Um, can't help but sometimes let my imagination run away with me a little bit, you know, in terms of how this might pan out. And I look at these sort of English estates that we have here, and of course, you can't manage a sizable estate single-handed, so you end up having um, people come in to assist you. Um, so what would happen if you, you, you then got into a situation where you were employing people? Um, w would that compromise your your position now, given all the statutory law, the appear, uh, employment law, employment regulations? Agreements between safety. men. Mm -hmm. Who are you making an agreement with? And what well, type of agreement is You would be making an agreement it? with those individuals, man to man. I appreciate that. But then if one of them became injured or something happened, you know, I'm just looking, trying to, you know, I'm just trying to sort of visualize how that could pan out, what the implications would be. I'm thinking Is it not it. similar to running a, a business where you got to take care of everything? Well, absolutely. But, you know, what I'm saying is, where would the line be between you being the private man and and, and then having, having, you'd have to have some sort of statutory, um, how you pay them, be a I company or, or, or some sort of public entity that could then be the interface at arm's length to employ those people, wouldn't you? So could you, is there any provision that you could do that? Is there any way that you can um, set, set up some sort of organization? Could you I would think we'd come into assurance. Well, I was thinking, could you have a trust? And the trust... <laughs> Instead of going way too far off topic, because you're right back into equity and trusts, and yeah. you will never get the... Um, okay, well, that's what I've been thinking. Each store I look at seems to close, you know. But that's the thing. De facto only deals in trust. De jure, you deal with everything yourself. Wow. Um, okay, so law and jurisdiction answers everything that you ever ask. Put it to the rules of law and jurisdiction. Right, so if I injure you in your jurisdiction, you have to come to my jurisdiction to make a claim and prove that I did that against my laws, and that you, by your laws and by my laws, have that authority to make that claim. Right, okay. because my laws also have to recognize you in a capacity to make a claim against me, even if my laws say that I can't do that. Right? So if you yeah. notice, English law is already written with all this stuff in place and, and the and just and the uh, determining factors to law and jurisdiction always deals with that. So the only so if you're gonna be going into other if you're gonna make an agreement to pay somebody something, then you pay them what you agree. Right? You don't be a shyster. No, no, I think Nigel's pay. point might be, in fact, it, it, it's how if you pay them, is that not an agreement in itself? Yeah, and who exactly. Are you making and thereby, it to? you're bound by sta statutory obligation. Who's bound by statutory obligation? Only the person that's that's in that jurisdiction. You're not in that jurisdiction, so the only thing you're agreed to is what you agreed to with that person. person. That, that person, person is in, is that, in that, that group, group. so he's, he's bound by all those other laws. Where so basically, th so this is what people thought was common law. Yeah. yeah. That's mm. natural law. That's natural, natural law. law. People, what Which people is think, 
Yeah, so what people are thinking natural law and common law are two different things. Common law is slave law. It's the first level of trust. Don't ever claim it. You have a warranty of it. It's not your law. Just like equity. It's not anything in English, English law. is not your law and not your jurisdiction. If you've released the corporate person and you're vesting your estate. It's that simple. So that means that if, if I injure somebody in a different jurisdiction, they have to come to my jurisdiction. Right? Because they sure your your police can pick me up and everything else as soon as they put in front of the judge. They don't have subject matter jurisdiction and they don't have a law. They have to they have to release me, right? And that's why it's also important that before you go to another jurisdiction, you understand the laws and what they are. Because if they're going to a jurisdiction that does not recognize freedom, you're going into that jurisdiction and you're never coming back. Yeah, that bit I understand. Right. So everything is everything is based on what law and jurisdiction you're bound by, right? And so many people think that, oh, I don't have to listen to your law and whatever, blah, blah, blah. I'll just take you to my court. Well, that's not how it works. So you can cock off all you want, but guess what? You're coming to my court. And that's what people, people keep saying, that they're going to take them to my court. Well, you can't have your own court until you have your own land and make your own laws, right? And, and also have a whole bunch of subjects to have a courthouse and courtroom, paper, the printing press, the ink to write on the paper, right? And all these other things. Because you only have your own lens. You don't have printing presses. You don't have ink, right? You don't even have a paper machine to make paper. So how do these things happen? You kind of see what I'm getting at? You're in your own jurisdiction. So this belief that just because you're bound by that law, everybody else is? No, you're bound by that law. And when people start realizing they need to ask the other person, where do you live and what do you do for a living? And that'll tell you what law they're bound by. No. Then things are going to get so much easier. Right? And you have to take them to their court and their jurisdiction. Right? Like if you're claiming land in Manitoba, you have to go to Manitoba and claim that land. You cannot claim land in Manitoba in the UK. Appreciate that. Right? Just like if I injure you here, right? You can't go home and claim, make a claim in the UK that I injured you from here while you were here. You have to come here and make your claim here against me and my jurisdiction. Because yeah. your, your courts have no jurisdiction over me. So sure, they can make a claim and say, yeah, he's wrong, but there's nothing they can do. They can just tell you, yeah, he was wrong. Okay, well, that's really good. Right? Because they have no jurisdiction. So this is that basic laws and law and jurisdiction thing that people really need to understand that the owner of the lands or the assumed owner, right? If it's a trust, it's the assumed owner, right? That has the ownership of the lands and that person makes the laws. Just like the Canadian Ownership Determination Act. If you're not the uh, eligible person and the control person, you can't control it. They control it. Okay. Right? So it's the same thing. It's it's whoever owns the lands in absolute, right? In absolute is the one that makes the laws for it. And that's the jurisdiction. Right? Because subject matter in subject matter jurisdiction within equity is the law itself. Well, that's an equitable law that came in an incorporated environment. That, that got created by a corporeal hereditament, which is the land tenure you granted at birth. See, so they're all attached. People just don't realize that, that it's because you accepted the group that that other subject, the territorial subject matter, is assumed. Right? Now they're assuming that that uh, subject matter is the provincial or federal law. Right? And the personal jurisdiction is you as the corporate person. Right? See what I'm getting at? Yeah. So once you review, once once you remove the corporate person, now you can refute the, the subject matter jurisdiction. But now you're refuting it with common law. So now those equity courts can't see it. So you have to go to their superior court, which is which is the common law courts, to force the lower courts to to uh, to stop their proceedings. Right? You use it for a writ of prohibition because they don't have the jurisdiction. Okay. Mm. So yeah, all the all these things can always be answered by law and jurisdiction. Says 
if you want to make a law on your plant on your for your lands that you have to have a license plate on your vehicle and then you have to have a 500 500 foot pole that sticks off the roof everybody has to do that so be careful what laws you make law of nature made all the laws needed and as long as you follow those laws everything will take care of itself right it's just like if you take care of the sense the dollars take care of themselves right mm -hmm. everybody's trying everybody try, everybody's trying to play with the thousand with the thousand dollar bill when they don't even understand when the penny's gone right and they can have it back at any time right because they gave they gave the pennies away right but they think they have the thousand dollar bill which makes up that right all those pennies make up the thousand dollar bill well you gave them away so that's not your thousand dollar bill right okay yeah that's good um on the last call i mentioned the 90 days and you mentioned it again a short time back. Um, I can't profess to have any authority suggesting that, but what was suggested to me was that was the sort of time they needed to make the arrangements sort of in the back office uh, to deal with the necessary changes in status. I believe it's in Coke upon Littleton. Uh, Maitland's Papers, I think it's volume two. Yeah, uh, is it, um, Maitland's paper is really good because uh, he actually uh, goes through the court scrolls and everything and the actual uh, writs that we are going to be using for the session and stuff like that, and he explains them all and how what people did when they and what made them what failed and right and kind of critiqued did a treatise on on the actual uh, court scrolls for this process. Yeah. And he actually and he goes through it there. So it, it depends on what writs you're going to use. Uh, it, it basically depends how much research you've done and how much of it you can actually prove. That that's pretty much what it boils down to. If you can go in there with everything that you need, it, it seems like yeah, it's the first time it's going to be done, and it could probably be done in a lot less than ninety days. Right. However long it takes for the judge to get the passing of the accounts done. That's but, right. Yeah, but, but that's not to the final stage. So you're already released and everything else. Okay. See what I've done that? So. Because as, 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 as soon as you get the your writ of entry approved by the court, like recognized by the court that you have that 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 land, then you're, then you're done. Yeah. As soon as he's recognized that, yes, we're going to grant you that writ, I'd be making a motion that you can actually go to those lands right away because you have no place to go and the sheriffs can just work around you, right? You'll even just stay in a little corner until they're done so you don't disturb any of the things that they're trying to do accounting on, right? You're not going to stay in the houses or whatever until the accounting's completely done with them type of thing, right? So you don't interfere with the accounting process, right? Because that's the only reason why they would be able to say no. So if you're like, well, no, no, I got a camper and I'm just going to stay over on the corner here, right? And not do anything with anything. And I'll wait the two weeks until you're done. Right? You see what I'm getting at? Yeah. Just it gets me out of harm's way out of from the fee simple and any more injuries that could happen. Okay. That's good advice. Is this another is this a good time for another quick question? You posted a YouTube uh, about a uh, was it um, Causes of action in common law, but it was overvoiced um, by um, some sort of computer voice, and half the text wasn't auriculated. Is there a transcript of that anywhere? I was know, it? but I believe that was when I was telling you about the book, wasn't it? Not I was. I'm pretty sure that's when I was quoting you that book, um, uh, Tree Ties on, on Tenures and um, Law of Uses and Trusts. Ten years. And if you look in the library on omnipotence, there's a top downloads uh, where it gives you a list of the ten most uh, popular downloaded books. 
They're the right. first. They're the first two. Top, one and two. They're the most downloaded, most popular because they're powerful. It's going to tell you the entire history of Kamala, what it is, and what and what uh, the trust really is, and everything else. So the land your the land tenure book is going to tell you what the common law is, how it originated, and everything else. And then the uses and trust is going to explain that the equitable system and everybody that's gone to see and how that all happened. Okay. So going back to that YouTube, it felt, I suppose, I mean, okay, when you watched it the once, um, I thought there was about 19 mentions there, but a rough guess. I mean, is, is that pretty much near the, the total count, or do you think there's more or less, or how accurate was that? I'm not, what do you mean, 19? Well, it went through quite quickly, didn't it? Because it was basically uh, describing um, causes of action in co common law. I'm just trying to find it now. I've got so many tabs open. I lost track of where it was. Um, but it was quite a good little YouTube. As I say, the voiceover didn't really follow the, the, uh, the written PowerPoint, if you follow me. Oh, okay. Yes, we have those. Um, they should be on the YouTube page. Where's the YouTube page? Uh, Somebody want to post post them the link to the YouTube page with all the YouTube videos? Yeah, we'll see. Um, I'm, all, I'm also in the process of making a page right now where from the site you'll just be able to go and look at the videos right from the site. So I'm just in the middle of making the live, uh, the page now. So. Brilliant. And uh, Jay is actually doing up a whole bunch of other videos. There's over, I think he said, 40 hours of, of wow. videos that are going to be coming on, going to be hitting, going up slowly. Because we got to convert them to put them on, on YouTube. So he's converting them and they'll be slowly going on YouTube, probably one or two a day type of thing. So, so is it under library? I'm just looking yes. now on Potence Library. How about you roll with version statutes definitions? Look to the right hand side of the screen, it'll say most popular. I got conference, community, library, law click blog. Library. Library. On, yeah, just click on the just yeah, library. And then scroll down a little bit. Yeah. And look and look to your right. There's going to be new documents, and then below new documents is going to be top downloads. Or Hang on, let me refresh the page. Maybe things have changed. Because this is dated 30th of January. Just notice that. Come on. All right. Log in. Oh. Sorry to take your time on this. That's okay. Okay, so library. I've got Admiralty Law, Reversion, Statutes and Definitions. Look to the right. To the right. There should be a bunch of boxes on the right that's... Uh, does how about uh, does somebody want to post those two links in the room for me? There's the YouTube link. <laughs> okay, great. Yeah. Let's go there. That's that one. Um, I can grab it really fast. What did you want off of Omni? What link? I was trying to find that YouTube um, for the causes um, oh, shit. It's the common gone. law. Wrong page. Wow, this wow. is really good. Explaining the set of K. Yeah. 
Is that what you meant? Yeah, uh, that no, was the game. It was, was it causes in action or at common law? It was describing the different types. But I'm busy on here trying to find it now. Like I said, I've got too many tabs open. It'll be here somewhere. Okay, well, we'll leave it till next time because I don't want to hold things up. I posted four links in the room, and that's going to be the law of, uh, law of 10 years, the law of uses of trust, readable edition of Coke upon Littleton, and uh, treaties on private international law and the conflict of laws. Those are basically the four main books that you really want to uh, get an understanding of. for this. Anybody else, Anybody else have, any have any questions, questions or anything? anything? If you're, uh, Can I have a question? Oh, go, oh, go ahead. I was going to answer yours, to be fair. Um, oh, beautiful. Thank, beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, you said uh, to understand yeah, you require a selection of land you don't have in your name, uh, don't have in your name, so it can be in your friend's name, um, invest it from them. It depends, obviously, what capacity they're in. If they're a donor, then no. If they're a fee simple subject, then yes. What title? What's their title? Their seat uh, in law. Okay. Obviously, we know the answer to that. Well, I'd assume we would. So, yeah, you could just from your mate, you could give it to them however you wanted to. You could sell it to them. They could buy it off you for a tenner if you wanted. Okay. Okay. So yeah, I'm just to comprehend that it has to be like land, as in that's not lived on, that's just kind of empty. That's this is the this is the goal. This is what you truly truly have to do. As you can't just go buy a house like this way. You can't invest a house, right? You want to get land. You want to invest the land, and it has it to has be to unlived be on. on. No, it's, it's it's about where you're claiming is about you being able to sell survive you know self-sustainably being able to look after yourself grow whatever food you want so if you it's not it's not practical for you to have a house with you know okay. a hundred foot backyard just with a swing for the kids do you know what I mean because there's not you, there's only so many potatoes and tomatoes you might grow at the bottom of there right and obviously so it's if not you only that you can like 60, 60, 60 acres, acres then you could say that land's suitable for me to live upon, to grow a greenhouse and build a house on it and have a well and fully self-sustained. Self this is what you're looking for, this type of land, yes? yes? Well, yeah, as long as on right next to that 80 acres there weren't a huge thousand square foot shopping mall that thousands of people go yeah, every yeah, weekend. No, I don't know, I probably wouldn't go there. Like nowhere, kind of kind of yeah, uh, right. I, I, can I jump in for a second? Um, you can claim any land, so that 60 acres, it can already have a house and well and everything on it already. Okay. It doesn't have to be abandoned, it just anybody that's holding a title by purchase. So anybody that's in fee simple, so let's say you're on 60 acres right now and you, you had your, let's say you loved the lands and this is where you wanted to spend the rest of your life and you could self-sustain and do everything you wanted there. Then you mm -hmm. could sell that to a friend that understood this process. Mm -hmm. So you could sell it to them, then become mm -hmm. divorced, and then make a claim from them, and then they just go to the court and transfer it to you. Okay, they have to go to the court and transfer to me as the donor, correct? That's right, because don't forget that they would be acting as somebody that has to... Tr that that's There is no injury if... The person, if the individual in fee simple follows the law and act, because what's supposed to happen when you give, when you're in the donor capacity, and you mm -hmm. claim claim lands from somebody that's in fee simple, the law requires them to give it back to you. Well, they can't give it; they have to. The courts can only do it. So they would, so okay. they would make, 
they would make a court date to give it back to you because they can't. The judge has to. Okay, understood. I'm trying to. So I'm very new to this. I'm just trying to find the processes of how to go about it. I have a lot of reading to catch up on, and I'm just trying to ask questions as I'm going along. Yeah. No, those are good questions. Um, yeah. Yeah. Yes, yes. It, 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 it all boils down to that you you don't want to hold anything that is an incorporeal hereditament, nothing that you have to register or right. get a license to have, right? Type right. of thing, or insurance mm -hmm. to have it and use it. Um, right. Though, can, I, if, can I be a donor with a driver's license, or do I have to give up everything before I become a donor? No, you can't have a driver's license. That's why uh, Okay. you want to be ready and have all your court stuff done and everything else. So you can use that driver's license right up to the day that you send in your release and everything else. Oh, okay. And then from that, like a credit card, driver's license, anything that is government ID, even like SIN number and um, even like a card to go to the hospital, all of that has to be given up. Yeah. Uh, you don't give it up. It's you. It's automatically done through the court process, okay. and through your release. Okay, so, through the release. Got it. Okay. That's right. Yeah, don't you don't send the you don't send don't. the stuff into the government. You send them just a, a release telling telling them that you no longer are that entity and you're no longer holding anything in trust. So, because you already given everything back in trust. Now you okay. want to be removed as the trustee. Okay, but do you become beneficiary at all? I'm sorry, I'm asking these questions like just walking in here. I should be reading more, but before to ask questions, but, but you're, you're the beneficiary to the corporate shares. Corporate shares. That's right. That's the equitable interest that you can make off everything because you don't actually own anything as the corporate person. Got right. it. I understood. Then, I was trying to figure out the shares business. <laughs> So now right. I understand this. Yeah. Yeah. And then and the, the other, other thing, the other, the other part, part is just your land. Okay. So you got it. There's two different agreements, right? Yep. There's one so you the want to go separately in the courts for separate land and separate shares, correct? I'm, are no, you going to do it all together or are you going to do it separate? All, to, to all, to, all together. You're doing it's, it all together? Okay. All together, yeah. Um, that's what we were talking about earlier about uh, that Canadian Ownership Determination Act with the Correct. shares. Right. Where yep. if mm -hmm. we can actually get them to recognize that we are the proper individual and that they are to terminate them, once they start that process for terminating those corporate shares, then we adjoin all the other parties for the other processes as well and get it all done within that one court action. Okay. Now, it, if they don't do that, then it's the same thing. But we're just making a claim instead and adding all those things in, in, into the claim, right? That they didn't do that they were supposed to do because that's the injury now, right? It's when they don't do it that it turns it into an injury. And now we have to make a claim because they're not following the law that they're bound to. Okay. So if they're not going to follow through, then that's the injury. Okay. I understand. That's right. So that's why when if you give a friend your lands that you want to vest later, mm -hmm. right? If they mm -hmm. understand the law, then when you give them the notice, they're going to do it and there's going there's going to be no injury. So they right. they did nothing wrong. There's nothing that they can get charged for, they can't lose anything, right? Or anything like that. Mm -hmm. Got right? it. And be, and because they just bought the property, mm -hmm. every, anything that was done to the property for like the building the houses and so on and so forth, they didn't mm -hmm. do that waste, so they don't, it's not it's it's not an injury that they did, right? Okay, so you can't, right? You see, so your your friend is completely off the hook for anything as long as they abide by the law, right? As long as they don't try to keep it and stuff like that, right? Because yeah. you're going to get it anyway, <laughs> right? And that's yeah. another point that do you really want to do that? Because I'd like to bring this up because you, um, sure it might it might end up kind of being simpler. To give it to a friend, yeah. But then you then you lose all your equitable interest from those lands, because if you sold those lands to any to somebody else, you can claim those lands from the person that you sold them to, and now you that money that you sold your lands for, you can use for vesting your estate. Oh, okay. Interesting. 
You're okay. going to get the land it, anyway, so... Yeah, opinion. of course. Of course. So, so that's the theory behind that. Right? That's yeah, just yeah. looking at different avenues and how things will how play out, right? And, you, and I hope that you, now that you've asked those questions and stuff... When you're reading it, you'll you'll see where this is, you'll you'll see it in the in the law now as you're reading it. Right, so. exactly. Yeah. Okay. So shares and land together, one shot in the courts. This saves money, I guess, right? Yes, and don't forget that there that the corporate person is only the acceptance of the land. So the corporate person is actually the moot part of the claim. You want the land. Because that's mm -hmm. your real freedom, and that's where all your rights and your and your true equity stand. Of course, right? it starts with so, the land. Of course, that's right. So as soon as you can get it in there for anything, you, you you're going to join everything else because that's the real factor to the to everything that's going on. Because yeah. if you didn't have, right, you see what I'm getting at. If the, if that mm -hmm. wasn't a requirement, right, then you wouldn't mm -hmm. be doing it. Right. right. Like myself, I don't care about the ownership rate or anything else. Right. You kind of see what I'm getting mm -hmm. at? Like, if I could just go in and file right now and they just give me my land, I wouldn't even care yeah. about that. Right. Right? It's just that they wrote it into the law, so now I have to do it. Otherwise, they're not going to recognize me in the next stage. I understand. Right? Because we didn't make the law. We're kind of... See what I'm getting at? It's English law, and it was created yeah. way before we ever existed. <laughs> so... Mm -hmm. Did you have got... a question? No, I, I texted you. Like... You dump, you dump all your credit cards and ID, health cards. I mean, uh, I'm not afraid of that, except how do you travel? Like, our friend gave us, he dumped all that stuff. And he's a prisoner in this country. He can't move. He can't get on an airplane. Um, he doesn't have any ID of any card. And he's really free, but he can't travel. What do we do for that? That's what, um, that's uh, for one, that's why we were talking about the Canadian Ownership Determination Act. You don't cancel those credit cards and everything else. You take, because uh, credit cards, you don't have any value. They're credit. Uh, so you yeah. don't have any value there. Mm -hmm. um, anything that has value, the Canadian ownership, like um, in Canada here, it's called the Canadian Ownership Determination Act. And some things, it seems like RSPs, they quadruple. And other things quadruple in the in the actual vesting process. So oh, if man. you have, so if you have assets and stuff like that, um, you take that act to an, a certified accountant because it even it's 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 done by the rules of the certified accountant of can certified accountant act of Canada, and so it's about it follows the same rules. So you take that to your accountant. And tell them and, and get them to figure out and find out where the best place to put those things are. And then all you have to do is keep enough cash so you can live for I would say like if you don't if you started today and you didn't even understand English law and you had to learn I mean English and or English law and you learned English and if, if you took two years, I guarantee within that two year period, not only would you learn English English language. But you'd learn the determining factors of this required in order to vest it. You see what I'm getting at? So as long as you're prepared from the time that you uh, start this process, you're talking about a vacation. And about the traveling part, um, that's getting more in-depth again. But that's why you want to have somebody else that will uh, help you out. So... They hold the assets, so the so the camper and truck that you drive around to stay in while you're vesting, is in their name. It's registered in their name. You've already given your your release into them, so you're no longer the corporate corporate person. So now the laws of driver's licensing, and all that stuff, no longer apply to you. So when they pull you over in that vehicle, that vehicle is not yours. It's insured by the person that's in control of it. They have no jurisdiction over you. There's nothing they can do. Because and, that uh, person didn't... And, right? Can I say uh -huh. that? Not property, like my case in point here, the house I'm sitting in right now, living in, is not owned by me. The, my Mustang GT convertible in the car garage is not owned by me. It's not owned by a numbered company, which is owned by a trust that I hold. So I don't have anybody else, but I have this trust, which is a, a lawful entity owns the shares of a numbered company, and my power bill comes to the numbered company.
adopted. My, my uh, energy bill, natural gas, goes to number company. The vehicle is registered. There's a pickup, RAM 14 RAM pickup. Everything's registered in this numbered company. Is that okay? Do I have to change all that? Uh, it's all still attached to you. Pardon me? It's still attached to you. Still well, uh, actually, it's not. It's very unattached because the shares of the numbered company, I set it up, and I had all the shares. And then I... <laughs> so that's what I'm getting at. No, but so he sold the shares. You sold the shares? I sold the shares. The trust sold the shares. I have nothing. I, it's, cause there's no, there's no uh, uh, paper trail because nobody owns a trust. I'm a trustee of Nobody owns a trust. And the trust owns all the shares of the numbered company. Yeah, and I'm hold just... On Fuck all here. I'm not. But, but hold on a second. You're you said you're the trustee. I'm the trustee of the trust, and the trust owns the shares of the company. But I'm not. I could walk away from that trust and say, "Hey, I quit. I quit." No, you can't. I like to Pardon me. I, oh yes, I could. Yeah. But the trust, you're, I'm the trustee. Who's beneficiary of the trust? Uh, my children. Oh, okay. So they own the trust. Yes, so but you can't. Catch. But you can't abandon the trust. That's the catch. And the trust. So, 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 so now you're in an equitable agreement to hold those things in trust for somebody. You can't yeah. do that. Yeah. Oh my goodness! If I have to change my whole life. I worked on this for years and years. And years. <laughs> <laughs> See, that, that's that. that that's. <laughs> That's how you hide things in equity. <laughs> you can't hide things in common law. You can't. You, nothing in equity can hide from those in common law. So can he not sell the trust to someone else? You know, for you know a buck, whatever. And then when he comes back, does he want? You well, know, his, he, re, you know, receive his, it back, or is is really going back to the equity again? I don't know. That's a really good question. Can you sell a trust? That's good. No, you can't sell it. You cannot sell a trust. No. Okay. No, um, okay. The benefit he, he'll have to get the, the the trust transferred to another trustee with the consent of the beneficiaries. Okay. Another trustee. Just a, another trustee. Yeah, somebody that's going to be staying in the system. Okay. Somebody that stays in the system, you'd have to transfer them to be yeah, the trustee. Okay. That's it. That's all you have to do. With the, with the acknowledgement that the beneficiary is aware and okay with that. That's what he said. Yep. Well, Carol, I get the Lawrence. He's one. He's a trustee. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's yeah. A, kind of the system. And yeah. another another person is that they'll ever follow this. I don't think. But if they did follow this, then I guess it all the problem. Yeah. These are good questions, though, because, you know, then we know uh, about trusts and things, how to manage that as well, because that will probably be a lot of people. Uh, I've uh, been interested in trust for more than 20 years. Set things up with one. The trust has a bank account. I got the checkbook. I don't have nothing else. I used. To, I mean, the, the the bank account has to pay the trustees' bills, so it does that. And uh, now you're saying to me I have to separate myself from all that. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, you you can't have any you can't have any uh, attachment to anything in equity. Otherwise, you can't give up your corporate person. That's the same thing as quitting your job but keeping the truck and tools. Yeah, I, heard, I understood that because a month ago, almost the day, I quit a job and had to turn back the truck and tools. <laughs> yeah. Literally, literally. There's a, a Nissan Infinity and there was only one screwdriver, but I had to give it back. Oh yeah, they want it. it. Doesn't yeah. Even if it's just one screwdriver, they want it back before they'll all accept that release from you. So, and if you don't, then they say that's fine. Then I'm going to charge you for stealing it, <laughs> right? Yeah, I, I, I see that. And I had to take from the office whatever was mine. I I emptied certain things on the laptop that were mine, like the photos, and the laptop was theirs. That's right. Yeah. Yeah, and that's also, me. William, where I was telling you I have to return my natural resources cards and stuff. I can't just uh, give them to the Queen's Bench or anything. They actually got to go back to natural resource. Uh, no, as long as you make sure that you uh, establish the 
your uh, concern about making sure nobody gets that or anything else, that should you should just be able to deal with that right through the courts because the, the government isn't even got to remember that the the judge is the court's nanny. I mean the judge is the government's nanny. So as long if you that's the best place to that would be the best person to deal with that with. This way nobody can ever get that, and you can even state that in the claim that. This you're tra- giving only to the judge in person, because it's such a se- you believe it to be such a severe matter, right? Yes. And that's just showing that you're being a diligent person, right? Once you have your uh, vested, once you vested your land, can you use credit cards after that? As you said, it's credit. It's not really debit. It's not really anything, right? But can you keep your credit cards through the whole thing, or is that still being part of commingling within the system? Once you vest, you won't be able to use any of your credit cards or anything else. That's why you're going to be using cash, and that's why okay. you set okay. yourself up to have enough cash to to do your court process and for however long you think that it might take you. Okay. Right? Because. Um, what are you? Car, board a plane, uh, reserve a hotel. Uh, this whole damn stinking society is set up on a credit card, and I hate it. Yeah. That's what we need. You just get a friend to do all that for you, I guess, right? <laughs> I don't know. Oh, you have enough friends. Yes, yeah. You, you you could, yeah. You could use a friend's credit card and pay them cash if they don't if they yeah. allow that, and if that's not against the law. Remember, because you right. don't want to break a law in their jurisdiction at this right. time, right? You want to show right. that you're not somebody who's looking to just get around the system you just want nothing to do with it um right. and about but once you, you're out i believe yep. that you do get a credit card because all your funds are going to have to get transferred to a private international account and in okay name. then so that's all cool. that's all that stuff and everything will comes out come there's already all that's process they've already got everything done um, as okay. far as license plate goes, I believe you get an, uh, um, a federal plate and things like that, just so you're not looking like you're sticking out wherever you go. Right. So you are you are gifted some kind of um, replacement for the old credit cards for a new credit card that is attached to the account. Well, it's not gifted. It's yours. Yeah, it's yours. I mean, it's a replacement. Well, from the old to the new. Yeah. You'll, you'll get a treasury card, basically. Treasury card. Okay. Exactly. Yeah. 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 Because okay. you're the a sole treasury owner. Treasury card of it. Which allows you to yeah. get on a plane, um, order something on Amazon, all of that. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Uh, no, won't won't let you get on a plane. Um, that's the thing. You got to remember, you're you're your own territory. So now, any territory that you want to go travel into, you have got to establish your rights, and get that confirmation from them right because it's the same thing as uh, I use um, I think this is a good analogy you're the owner of uh, Walmart mm-hmm. and you're sending a friend to Walmart to go grab something off the shelf um, right. there's there's thousands of Walmarts and mil- and thousands and thousands of employees and no- and I can almost guarantee you that none of the cashiers know who the owner is so right if I send somebody to Walmart just to go grab something off the shelf and walk out the door, they're going to get arrested. So, right. right. So I'd make sure that that person has the proper documentation to be able to go in and grab that thing off the shelf and walk out the door. And that's basically so, that, that's, so that's that would be you getting in contact with these jurisdictions and and stating your rights and everything else and getting into an agreement before you even go. Okay. So. Y- Along with the credit, like the treasury card, would you get something of a passport that is unique to the donors or no? Or as, as you said, you have to keep calling in advance and saying, I'm going to move into this territory. Is that okay with you? Um, I don't know. I haven't got there that far. I'm a, <laughs> I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, well, I'm just being honest. Um, no, it's they, a good question. From, though. From, from what I understand, they write a private act. So, okay. because this is done in Canada, and Canada is a part of the common law uh, nations, right? Mm-hmm. Just like mm-hmm. almost the rest of the world. Once it's recognized mm-hmm. in this jurisdiction, it will be easy for you to uh, call up or email these other jurisdictions to work out your travel 
your travel arrangements and yeah, get the documentations that that's required so th so okay. you're recognized going right. through the border crossings and stuff like that where you're just going right. to be like oh, okay i've seen that before better not mess with that person you're free to go right. on right of course right you see what I mean? mm -hmm. so it's going to be a fast track card because it goes back to law and jurisdiction the yep. people in that jurisdiction have to have something that they recognize from their jurisdiction i can't right. write something for their jurisdiction no Right. So it's the same thing we have. Like it, it's uh, that's why we are, we're always going to end up coming back to this law and jurisdiction, and who's in control of that jurisdiction. Right. right. So as soon as you're in control of your jurisdiction, now you when you need to talk to these people, you talk yeah. to the heads of the country. You're not talking right. to the cashiers. So everything every, everything should 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 completely change, right? Mm. And because you're getting all these things from. Uh, recognition by a seal from a common law court that is mm -hmm. the highest court in all of English law mm -hmm. right it, it, we're starting in getting into areas that you know you're gonna start to be recognized you just have to start going through the processes right one more question with a bank account do you even have to surrender that no I would nope. just take everything out of it sorry well I just take I just take everything out of it okay Take everything right. out of the bank account. Well, but it, I if your name is attached to a bank account, is that something you have to release as well? Well, it's done. It's it's yes, because in your actual release, you're releasing all of your rights, everything. duties, and actions okay. to everything real right. and personal. Right? That's I'm everything sorry. in the fictional jurisdiction. Right. Got it. Okay. So, Fantastic. Yeah, so Thank you for answering all those release. questions. That's great. So just by that one release, you don't have to send anything in or anything else. You just have to stop being that person because by you doing the actions, are you're contradicting contradicting what you're putting on the paper. So if you put in that release and you're still driving around with a driver's license and using your credit cards and yeah. and right these guys, you're just you're being a vexatious and you're going to be a sovereign citizen. Understood. Understood. Because right? you can't yeah. be both. <laughs> Right? There's no mm -hmm. such thing as a sovereign and a citizen. Right. right. Exactly. And you'll never and you'll never be a sovereign. No, a sovereign never. Because a sovereign in English law is somebody that has uh, subjects. You're a monarchy, right? You're holding stuff in trust. Well, you don't want to be a trustee. Yeah, that's what you're, you know, that's the whole point of this is getting out of that type of relationship. Yeah. Right. You want to call your own shots for your own stuff. You want to have your true independence and true ownership of everything that you do. Mm -hmm. basically, that's basically what this is. It's just getting your capacity of true ownership back. And Sounds like total freedom to me. Yeah. And when they're talking about combining the titles in English law, there's only three types of titles, possession, remainder, and reversion. Well, re remainder is somebody that is halfway between possession and ownership, right? Because reversion is ownership in law. And possession okay. is only the right of possession. So when they mm -hmm. talk about combining your titles, they're, you're combining your two rights, your right of ownership and right of possession. That's all that that's all they mean. Because all English law is, is just the law over the things in trust. So as soon as you take a thing in trust, now you become subject to them as trustee for that thing. So that's why it all depends about us re releasing and not using those things anymore and proving that we're divorced. Because that's what the force means. That we're we don't we're out of possession. We're out of ownership. And because we have the true right of ownership, we get the fee that's attached. So we're even just, we're even seized of the fee. Because we don't have the lands. We don't even have possession of the lands. And the people that do are collecting a fee from it that are ours. Exactly. Right. So it's just combining all that. That's so when they're talking about combining uh, your estates, that's really what they're talking about. Because there's only three types of estates in English law. Um, say you're on your property and you you need your poop collected, or you need your uh, sewage, or you need uh, water. How do you have access to these things? But I'm thinking more like off-grid technology, so it's all there. But say somebody is connected to the grid. How does this work? Uh, well, I think you'd want to, because of the sheer amount of money that you're going to be getting and everything else, I'm yeah, sure just get be, fully off grid. Yeah, and, that's what I'm thinking. Yeah, because yeah, yeah, yeah. that's the way to do then, it. But then again, because land is the jurisdiction, 
And that's mm. what gives the authority who owns you. So just like everything else, if you need uh, somebody to come fix a toilet, you, they, if, you, if, you, if they agree to the price and you agree to the price, then they do the job and you pay them. It's done. Okay. Right. Okay. So if you needed hydro, right, you, yep. you, you could just pay the bill and you'd get your hydro. Right. But even right. though that they're not, that's a natural resource. So you don't even right. have to actually pay your natural, your hydro bill because they're sucking it off from your natural resources. Okay. Interesting. As in like right. a dam, you own the water <laughs> sort of. They, they don't own anything. That's the right. catch. I know they're, right. they're taking your dam and making energy from it kind of thing and killing your fish to make energy for people that yep. are dead exactly <laughs> right exactly. they're killing our planet for these things because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. right? that's really what they're doing they're raping our natural resources yeah. absolutely yeah corporate right. profit yeah when it's all ours and we when, and if we weren't doing the corporate scam and falling in line with this equity crap of corporations we wouldn't be doing this to the land. Look yeah. at the waste, right? We'd be sharing. We wouldn't. We wouldn't be growing fifteen hundred acres of pineapples to throw thirteen hundred the thirteen hundred acres away because somebody can't pay for it. Right. Right. Like it's just, that's just ridiculous. Right. People starving on the street when they have these absolute rights and all these things are going on when they're actually divorced by living on the streets. Like that, that tent city in, in Vancouver, every single one of those people are pretty much deforced and they have the, the natural right to t take the land that they're sitting on. Wow. How many are there? Yeah. Like this is like when people actually understand what, what this, what, how easy this is to do, right? Mm. Mm. And, and there's no need for it because I'm sure those, I'm sure a lot of those people could sure do with even 10 or 20 acres and a handful of seeds. Right, of course, like, yeah, and not be kicked off and not taxed, right? Because they don't work, so the tax ends up getting them thrown off the land, right? Right, when they own the land anyway. How many are in these ten cities? Um, hundreds. Looks, I, I think yeah, I think there's a couple hundred now. They're actually wow. trying to make a, a building complex for them. Could just have tiny houses that are with solar power, and there you go. Yeah, there's lots of options, but no, they're gonna go and make them that uh, a C container condo building type of thing. Oh, okay. Mm. Oh yeah, they're just gonna make it millions of dollars, right? Yeah. Thank you so much, William, for answering all my questions. This is fantastic. Um, thank you very much for the time. My goodness. Yeah, going back to what Caroline was saying earlier about titles. I think generally we need to just avoid using any of their titles, don't we? Exactly, because a title means you're a subject. Yeah. Right. They exempt you from it because they don't. When you when you take something back from somebody that they don't own, they exempt it because they don't own it. They can't give you ownership of something they don't own. I did ask a question the other night, and I'm not sure I fully understood it. Given that this is all going to be now under the heading of common law, can we still, should we still, in order to create an estate in perpetuity, should we not create a common law pure trust? Otherwise, how would you express how the air or the airship would be preserved, the right of succession on the land? The, the right of succession on the land and nature is you being there. Yeah, sure. Right, so there is, there is, there is no titles. There is no transfer of nothing. You being there means that you're the one that has control of it. There is no ownership in nature. Right. True so yeah. when, right. if your children want the lands, then when you're done with them, they better be there, yeah. or they don't want them. <laughs> right. Yeah. Them right. Works so, for me. And land is free, so this to anybody to pick up and go and move to wherever they want. So. Is it a really a big deal to have to have now a title of succession when anybody can now go and live on any land that they want anywhere that they want as long as nobody else is using it because now everybody would be in the natural jurisdiction and all with the same rights, right? 
there's no fees, right? You see what I'm getting at? Now we can yeah. exchange our seeds freely and 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 interact freely out of out of wanting to interact instead of wanting to make a buck off you. Um, right? Like that, that's it's it's when we actually just go back to the laws of nature with every with everything. It we don't need we don't actually need laws. If we use our critical thinking in everything that we do and realize that every action that we make is going to make a, a reaction from somebody else, we'll be fine. Yeah. Right? It's, sure that domino, it's that domino effect. Can, are, you, are you able to look five, six dominoes up to make sure that the domino that you're knocking over here isn't going to cause issues up the road? Right? Yeah, fair enough. Because we create, we create our own world, right? So if we're going to force everybody to pay for it and everything else, well, we're not going to have a very nice world. Anybody else have anything? <laughs> No, I'm, I'm good. Okay, I'm yeah, good uh, too. Okay, <laughs> um, in the morning I'm going to do some stuff on the site because i got to do a bunch of